Hey, we're live. Uh, hey. <laughs> hey. Well, hello, everyone. Uh, yeah, Mike and I are doing Mike from NerdSense. And you might be watching on his channel or my channel. But anyway, so Mike from NerdSense and I uh, decided to do a live review and just kind of hang out afterwards and talk and catch up. And I'm really excited for this. Uh, Very exciting. Yeah, um, definitely uh, looking forward to it. Yeah. So uh, your beer is a little different color than the one I was thinking we were drinking. That's racist. Uh, I mean, I did bring up color, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> not quite the definition, but yeah. <laughs> um, do you want do you want me to tell the people what we're reviewing? And... This is what I'm drinking. <laughs> nice. Just the yeah. hands. Yeah. Uh, yes, um, I am prepared, though, uh, which is unusual for, for, for a nerd sense video. But that beer is really good, just as an aside. It is. It's honestly, it's excellent. It's, it is the beer that changed my mind about uh, non alcoholic beers. Yeah. No, it's, yeah, it's no joke. It's really good. What's up? I'm assuming that's Dan specifically, but what's up, FLX dudes? Got to see. FLX Mike yesterday, so that was cool. So a lot of Mike this weekend. A lot of Mike. Yeah, yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong. So uh, as people can see from the title, uh, we are doing the barley wine from 2017 by um, Goose Island. And uh, do you want to talk about ABV and all that stuff? Yeah, let's do it. Um, I am. When I said I'm prepared, I, I was lying to your face. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, mine is a fourteen point four percent. I'm assuming that these were only one batch. My um, guess, yeah. yeah, and it's yeah, it's it, it's their uh, barley wine and bourbon, uh, Asian bourbon, uh, bourbon barrel. Sorry, from twenty seventeen. Uh, this has been in my cellar, uh, un. I was gonna say a different word, but untouched for uh, years and years and years. And while looking today for something, I I ran into it on the phone with Kyle. I was like, hey, yeah. you, have, you have this one. <laughs> And it worked yeah, out. We, it is, <laughs> not, not to immediately start making fun of Sean, but um, neither one of us are Sean. <laughs> so so it's not like we just knew we wanted to do something. And it was just like, should we get the same beer? Should we not? It doesn't really matter to us. Like, we just want to do this, you know, like whatever excuse, right, to get together. And then, yeah, Mike called me. I don't know what it was. Around noon, maybe? Yep. Right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. And it's I, like, I was, yeah, how about, I was rummaging around in a closet, like with a light on, like on my <laughs> on my on my phone. I had to have him on uh on speaker because I I was sitting there like a was rummaging through these boxes that uh, my wife hit on me. My dear. Yeah, I I didn't even know if I'd get cell reception <laughs> in my basement when, when I went down to look to see if I had you know some of the stuff he he was bringing up. So yeah, I mean it worked out well. Cheers, cheers. Yeah, I'm super, super excited to properly cheers. Uh, so can we, uh, let's get right into this, Mike, because I'm <laughs> I'm very excited for this. Me too. Uh, what are you using for a glass today, sir? Uh, I'm using the uh, one I believe you gave me, actually. Oh, nice. Oh, that, that's a great glass. Awesome. Yeah. How about you? I am going to use my... Uh, my treehouse farm and permittory electric glass. Oh, it's a nice looking glass. Yeah, I got it in uh, obviously in Connecticut at their, yeah. their location. But um, I'm I'm excited about this. I I don't know if I've used this glass yet, and I was really happy when I bought it. I because I have a problem. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I I haven't filmed the glassware video yet but <laughs> look at all the glasses i have and it just seems like a lot <laughs> all right i gotta do it off camera real quick just to kind of, okay yeah because it looks more well i guess on camera it's looking a little brown but pretty black it's more brown than black when i hold it off camera yeah i get if you for me um when i'm looking from the bottom i'm getting little bits of mahogany almost like a deep deep red hues almost yeah yeah and which is pretty common for the style too like it definitely looks like a big barley wine which <laughs> shocking yeah. um but yeah want to get right into the aroma or anything else about how it looks i was gonna say uh i i'm sure they it was a darker beer already but it's darker due to probably the barrel yeah that's true that's true 
So yes, yeah, just getting some uh, some nose on that. All right, snip it. <laughs> I mean, it smells, it smells like awesome. <laughs> it smells so good. It, you know what? And it makes me so mad that they did that coffee one. It's like, why would you ruin this beer with coffee? <laughs> but anyway, I don't want to make this about that. But oh my god, and like very impactful, very easy to um, pick out some things that's reminding me of, and it's it, it's like really it, you know aggressive in a good way. Do you want to talk about anything you're smelling specifically, or? I mean, I I'm getting right off the bat like two major notes. One of them is is the barrel. It is just oh. it is all up in the business, but also like. Cherry, cherry cordial. Yes. You know? Yeah. I, I like that you said that because I was getting a little bit of chocolate, some cherry, and then um, definitely the dried fruit thing kind of interwoven with the cherry for me, but still like that that uh, cherry cordial thing is so specific and true. Um, and yeah, lovely job with the barrel. Um, I, I mean, I, I assume it's around a year that they age them for, you know, I don't know. Because they make a point to say if it's like two years age for some of those specialty ones. So anyway, uh, but yeah, no, I mean, it's in, in the caramelized sugar notes. I mean, all that stuff that should be in this style. It smells so good. Yeah, I, I'm getting I'm getting almost like um, like a little bit of toffee and caramel kind of mm. a thing. I, I like the toffee note. Some of that brown bread we've talked about before. Yeah, like brown sugar in a big way. I think Ooh, like almost yeah. elasticity, you know. Yes. Yeah. Also, um, what was that? I, I just I just lost it. Sorry. Oh, sorry. We talked about dry fruits, but I'm getting almost like craisins in general. You know, like oh, okay. dry fruit. Dry, you said cool dry fruit. One. That counts it. But it smells awesome, though, Kyle. This is amazing. Right. This smells awesome. The the, the last little thing I'm getting is almost this um, whisper of of menthol mint herbaceous. Oh. Now. Just a little little whisper of it. It's really not a dominant thing. Just a little. No, you, there's definitely an herb note. You're not you're not you're not wrong there at all. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's awesome. awesome. <laughs> all right, let's get a taste. <laughs> Cheers, bud. Cheers, Mike. <laughs> right. I mean, it's so good. It's, it's so, so good. good. And like. Okay, so for me, it's that thing of this is my last bottle. So, like, I want it to be good, obviously, but I don't want it to be this good where I'm like, I don't have any more. You know, like, this is really good. Yeah, and one of the things we spoke about this morning was I said, well, I'll take this and I'll put it in my fridge. I walked out of the, the under my stairs. It's like a – it's basically my basement, but it's under the stairs. And I walked out and I was like, I think this is cold enough. I walked back, put it right back where I found it, because I, I, I didn't want it to be ice cold. I wanted it, you oh, know, really? like I, and I didn't want it to worry about taking it out an hour early. I was, this yeah. seems like a good temp. And by the way, yeah, perfect. This is probably like fifty-one degrees. It's right around there. It's perfect. It's exactly what I'm looking for. Yeah, I, I put mine in my stout fridge, which is at fifty-five. Um, I mean, I took it out right before we started, so it's got to be pretty close to that. And yeah, I mean, the temperature-wise. Yeah. Yeah, this is really allowing, you know, the stuff to shine for sure. I mean, it follows the nose pretty good, um, maybe different intensities, but I didn't get any surprises in the sip, you know, like where I was like thrown for a loop. I actually like uh, that the the fruit, especially like that cherry note is is so up there. It's almost tart, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I like that. And not in an infected way. Anyway. No, 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 no. no. It, but yeah, it's just a lot of times with barley, barley wines could be too sweet for me, you know. Yeah, and this is it has that really awesome balance because it does have that sort of brown sugary thing. It does have that sweetness. It does have that 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 molassesy kind of a note. Um, it does have those apple skins, which I also like. But Ooh. sorry, I, I'm beating the crap out of you. Sorry, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> but In but the, the, the cherry, thing, especially getting that apple skin thing. Good call. But I think that that cherry note, that that sort of little tart cherry and that dried fruit note, I think that's helping balance everything. So it's really, really nice. Yeah, because it's it's sweet but not overly sweet. And a lot of the things that I want to say about what I'm tasting are sweet things, which I think, like to your point, is making it sound would make it sound sweeter than it actually is. Yeah. And I'm wondering if, because I do think the apple skin thing is very pleasant in here. 
maybe that's a little bit signing or a little bit of a sign of the aging i mean to say you know i don't know but like it's really pleasant in it <laughs> like um really good barley wines i i've noticed in the last couple of years i get that note so okay. I, i'm i'm always looking for it i think mm -hmm. um and when i don't get it it is i i notice it right away okay yeah, of, yeah. that's for me <laughs> um if i'm doing a belgian style quad if i don't get plum like plum juice it, it, it can still be a good beer but like that's the thing i'm looking for because i love it so much in that style so i, I totally get what you're saying uh but yeah like for me it's yes the dried fruits the dates that kind of stuff it's got that yeah brown sugar molasses brown bread um a little bit of chars coming through yeah um, you know you had mentioned the uh, cherry cordial they do get a little bit of chocolate um not overly oaky but like no the, the barrel is there yeah i mean it's just it's a really nice you know i don't know it's just, it's just really nice all the way around i think i'm glad you brought the char because like on the nose i was just getting almost like straight wood you know and obviously yeah. with bourbon barrels it's a charred barrel and um when um i i don't i didn't get it right away but as soon as you said I'm like, oh that's that's what i'm looking for it has yeah. that other dimension and i think that that little bit of like that char is really really um uh, it's a really nice addition to the the flavor here. Yeah, yeah. Just barley wine for the win, and barley wine is life. So yes. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Cal and Mike. We're. I mean, I'm. Uh, so I, I didn't fully explain. So on Monday, uh, it'll be posted. Um, so Sean from Nerd Sense, Keith from Ninety Three Lumber, and I did a beer review together. And then, you know, I immediately messaged Mike, like, I basically, Sean, or Sean's basically cheating on you. So, like, we should cheat on, or you should use me to cheat on Sean. Uh, so, <laughs> so that hasn't aired yet. So, this is actually coming out first. <laughs> but on Monday, that's why, that's the reason. And, yeah, nothing against Sean. Uh, and I don't know if Sean wants us airing his business. But Sean's dealing with some house stuff right now. So, anyway. <laughs> yeah, plus Mike gets there first. <laughs> um. Oops. Great beer to talk about. Yeah, I, yeah, this is definitely, I, I say this sometimes when, uh, towards the end of reviewing beer, like do, reviewing a beer, and I'll be like, um, you know, I wish this, or th this is like a live stream beer. Like it's just one of those beers I think I could keep talking about for a while. And this definitely is one of those beers. So it's nice to have that time. And we can talk about other things and come back to this, obviously. Um, but yeah, this is definitely one of those beers. And I, yep, <laughs> you are 100% right. Fingers crossed for barley wine in 2024. But yeah, between the barley wine, the wheat wine, give us something. Yeah, it, yeah, it drives me crazy. This beer is awesome. Yeah, I, I, I was happy enough when we're, I was just like looking through all my BCBS. I'm like, we can do one of these. And yeah. I kept passing that one. And I wasn't sure you'd have it. And when you said you had it, I was like, oh, no. Because <laughs> yeah, I, I just. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, it's, it's like I, I had that really, really good uh, 2017. Um, I don't know if I put it in that chat or not, but I had a really good 2017 1050. And oh, okay. so, I, so just like, you know, two days ago, I had this big, rich, chocolatey, barrel aged uh, stout. So yeah. I was like, you know, and don't get me wrong. Like I, I was cool with doing Black Tuesday, which is something we originally discussed, and then I was cool with BCBS and everything. But just this one just kept catching my eye as I was yeah. passing by the box. You know, yeah. And, and for people watching, like we did talk, we were pretty close to pulling. What was it the 2018 regular, right? Um, actually, I think I did pull it instead of decide. And then yeah, when we stumbled on this, it's like yeah, let's like I mean, pros and cons, right? That one was an easier one to get. More people might have you know had it to drink along or whatever right but like i don't know just doing something special with some you know like in a special setting like this is awesome so this is a good question do, do you guys remember having this fresh um i do remember liking it quite a bit fresh me too um i for me because 2015 you know the whole infection year um my barley wine well I, here's what i want to talk about so that was the last year that the barley wine was that triple, triple used bourbon barrel because it had the bourbon in it first, then the uh, stout, then they would use the same barrel for the barley wine. And I was really nervous, uh, you know, like missing that little bit of a stout note that would come through. But then as I'm sipping this, I don't miss it at all. 
So it's kind of a cool comparison for me, fresh having that thought in my head versus drinking an hour. I'm like, I don't miss it. I mean, it would be cool if they did that again, but this is so good the way it is. Do you remember having it fresh? Yeah, I like that a lot. I don't remember it being this, um, having this much uh, char though. I think I remember it being sweeter, but I, I remember thinking it was awesome. Otherwise, yeah. the bottle would probably have been something that I, I would have just consumed like uh, yeah. just by chance. Yeah. Uh, well, I have this one. It's pretty good. I'll drink it. This was one that's been sitting around a while. Yeah. And because of the specialness, I think. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And, you know, I, I'm team age, you know, appropriate beers. Like there are beers that age really nicely. And this is definitely one of them. And, and we're experiencing that now for sure. I mean, I don't know which one of us, but I'm going to agree about both of us. <laughs> 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 is it just me or did last year's lineup seem this is a good conversation we could talk about i see uh, leftovers of the common variants all over which usually doesn't happen around here we have a so true um and then just i, I do want to talk about that just i'm like so whatever about like comments i don't want to like feeling like they're i'm not getting to them i'm sipping on some clag right oh cool nice um all right so Go ahead, Mike. I talked for a bit. What are your thoughts on last year's lineup holistically? I thought they were good. I didn't think there was any like anything that was just like whoa, except for one. And while the beer was excellent, it just wasn't. I feel what the bottle sort of promised, and I still like the beer. It was the one, the one with the allegedly had the banana in it. Okay, that was yeah, the one I was like, oh, really. You know, well, I didn't use a good word for that beer. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's supposed to be like almost like bananas foster in a, in a glass. Yeah. And I was like, chocolatey rich stout with bananas foster. Are you shitting me? Oh, yeah, that sounds awesome. Like, yeah. <laughs> and, and we know because we both like that and we both know that they're hard to come by. So that, yeah, I was so excited. I mean, so it's, it's kind of appropriate. Dan was at from FLX was asking that because that's something Mike and I talked to Mike from FLX and I talked about last night. Oh, nice. um was the um the uh backyard and it's like i still don't know if i liked that one or not like it, to me it was it, it, um and then which, the the, which one was it or which one was it it's the one i put last in my ranking <laughs> i remember that i'll look it up maybe i'm maybe i'm misremembering the name of it because i think of the backyard and i might be wrong but i, I remember that one like the name is from the two, two years ago the one with like the the supposed to be like cola almost that's what i was thinking of but i don't know the names ever no okay yeah it was backyard stout um so what was in it that's the one that had like um berries and stuff oh yeah 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 okay it had, um of course the one i click on doesn't have the what's in it oh mulberries mulberries um yeah. i did have my bad becker was uh yeah yeah and, and i think yeah so he just commented again yeah the um, Mary Mary. oh yeah because i i was making jokes about the uh the the mayor from washington dc marion barry who oh. got in trouble with the, the prostitute in the crack pipe and stuff yeah, yeah. <laughs> i was making jokes about that in the video yeah, yeah. I do remember that, that. it was good it was it was it didn't blow me away though and, and Dan, you have to write me that the banana one could have been epic um, and then, yeah, thanks for the assist on that, Dan. Yeah, so like, okay, so those two for me were weak. And I still don't even know if I like the backyard. I only bought one, and it definitely wasn't like, I'm going to go buy another one. Banana, I was like, it's not worth the uptick of price for how much it lacks banana. I'd rather have the regular anyway. Um, yeah. I did think prop was good and maybe better than it's been the last few years. I think either the year before or either last year or the year before, the prop was like really bad. It was like strawberry and stuff. Yeah, it didn't land. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I remember not liking it almost really at yeah. all. So this year's prop was, I thought, a lot better. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do think this. And then, I mean, to, to your thought earlier about like standout, I do think the Angel's Envy was a standout. I, mean, I, I love that beer so much. Um, I actually bought a bottle of Angel's Envy last weekend um, because, well, so I haven't like done an unboxing or whatever, but Keith gave me a little um, bottle of um, Angel's Envy like syrup 
And then it's got a cocktail recipe on the side and everything. And I'm like, I was already wanting to get Angel's Envy. I'm like, well, now obviously I'm going to. So I, I went out and bought that. Uh, I haven't made the cocktail or opened the Angel's Envy yet. But like that beer was so good. It made me want it. it same thing with the Larceny for the wheat wine. I was like, I like this one so much. I'm going to go buy a bottle of Larceny. So I think that's pretty telling that, you know, I drink a beer that is aged in a barrel and then I go and buy the spirit, you know? Yeah. I, I thought um, I, I'm, by the way, the worst beer drinker of all time because I just don't follow anything. And I just kind of, I'm just always just floating around by the seat of my pants. I don't care. Um, yeah. So I don't know if they did it this year, but I know last year, uh, the previous year, let's say yeah, whatever, yeah. They, they were doing four packs of like the, the uh, beers that they used to, oh, to yeah. age it. And I thought that was really, really cool. Oh, and, yeah, that was super cool. I, and I would love them to just release the stout without the barrel aging. Oh, just to awesome. kind of see what does this base stout even taste like, you know? So I, I think that would be, you know, a fun, super easy, you know, thing for them to do. And I think it'd get a lot of people would be excited and happy about that. I think it'd get people stoked to just try the base beer. Um, they could even do I, those like packages, like how they did the three years in a row vertical special packages. I mean, they could do a special package for it. You know, they could, I mean, it could be really cool. I think. I, I wonder though, like, because they're letting a little bit of it out of the bag when they're doing the, the, the single barrels. Yeah. I wonder if that'll be for them just almost like just kind of letting the magic, the magic um, trick be a little more visible. That's interesting. Yeah. I mean, th yeah. That I wonder, I'm, I'm not suggesting, but I'm just curious. Yeah. Well, even those, those small, those 12 ounce ones that you're talking about, at least one of those barrels isn't part of the blend, which was kind of interesting too. Was it the Willet maybe is not part of the blend? I think there's three. It's like Heaven Hills. Wild Turkey, I think. Wild Turkey. I think there's a third one, but it's not Willet. But maybe I missed, I don't know. I, I didn't prep like information about no. this stuff ahead of time. No, this um, is a conversation. That's how this works sometimes. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. If anyone's watching me, as, as you just said about yourself, if anyone's watching me for like, you know, industry inside info encyclopedia, I'm not that guy at all. <laughs> like, it's just I just a dude who likes beer and talks about it, and then you know presses play and presses off or presses record and presses stop. You know, every once in a while. No, what do you remember? All right, so let's uh, let's let's diverge a little bit, and let, then we can come back to the beer and, and what it's doing for us. Um, so I have something I could talk about a little bit, but you know, if you have anything, let's do it um, in your life. So, are you? Did you see anything about this new documentary about the Nickelodeon stuff with the kids? Yeah, I remember seeing. Oh, well, I mean, I remember articles about the guy before the documentary. Yeah, uh, yeah, I did end up. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Well, I did, yeah, I did end up watching. It's four episodes. And I did end up watching it this morning. And, yeah, I mean, it's – and I had read some of those articles as well. And, and, and you know, so I knew some of this stuff. But, yeah, it was just – just so, it, you know, the, the things that seemed – not that I watched a lot of those shows because I was too old at that point, but, like, all that I, I did watch. So, like, like the nostalgia piece, seeing that all the Nickelodeon-specific stuff, the slime, man, it's, like, takes me to that little kid – my, you know, myself as a little kid, you know, so like, it's like almost like vulnerable and you're watching like the horrific, it's like, oh my God, like what was going on behind the scenes and some of this stuff? Yeah, it was, it was freaking, it was nuts. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I remember um, seeing an article maybe a year ago, a little longer with uh, yeah. Ryder Strong and they did Danielle Fischel and a few, or who was the one who voiced Batman and Batman Beyond? Like, oh did, yeah. Did, um, is it Friedel? Is that his last name? Yeah, Will, Will Friedel, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think they they talked about it or something, or they wrote something. I don't remember now. Um, yeah, no, because they, they had that podcast, and they and they recently, I think they were trying to get out ahead of it. So they, because they had, the, the two guys, not the woman who played Topanga, had written letters of support for the guy. Um, um, so I think they were trying to get out ahead of it. Like, you Yeah, know. possibly. I, I, I also think that, like, like everyone has to be so cynical about everything, you know, and maybe that is the case, but like, I don't know. I, I, I'm trying to not be such a, and I, sh you know, I, that'll, it'll be my downfall essentially, but I'm trying to be more, 
like more not hopeful about people, but you know what I yeah. mean. Like, like I I do, you know. Honestly, I didn't think about that being the case until I saw an article like mm-hmm. this past week saying as much. Oh yeah. But I feel like not that I feel like I would hope that someone would have. I would hope that their feelings or what they've said are are how they really feel. Like I, I oh yeah, I would not, you know, like I, I don't think that that those letters that they wrote, um, there's no way they had a real clear picture of everything when they wrote it, you know, and you, you're, uh, you know, like oh they were adults, so like they were 21 years old, and I mean I don't mm-hmm. know about you, but I, when I was 21, I was not an adult. You know, <laughs> no, I, I give you your point. Yeah, for sure. And like if because their experience is their experience. And if they honestly wrote about their experience. Right. And then they like the guy. So they write, you know, letters. And well, it's like anything. Right. And I know you and I agree about this. When you're confronted with new information, it, you know, if it's accurate, you know, like if you, let me not say information. If you're confronted with new facts yep. that should alter your opinion about something, um, you know, like so. Yeah. Um, it was interesting. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> leave it at that. Uh, what else we got here? Nice video, guys. Have a great evening. You as well. Appreciate that. Um, and then Joe from the Fear Patrol. Cheers, boys. We'll have to watch back later on. All good. Um, yeah, things are good. Things are good. Um, so we were talking before, earlier in the day um, about that you were going to maybe see Ghostbusters. Yep. And you didn't. Um yeah. But did you have a good day? Like you said, you're going to go out to like grab lunch and stuff, or yeah, we went to uh, some Brazilian spot uh, up the street. It was uh, pretty good. I mean, I, what I kind of spot was it? It was a Brazilian spot. Oh, Sorry. Brazilian, cool. Yeah, um, I'm. The thing with Brazilian spots, especially, I think the big thing everyone wants to do is the picanha. Now I know you're not a, a meat eater anymore, yeah. but. Um, you know anything about picanha at all? Just that it's associated with Brazil. Yeah, it's it's like a kind of like a piece of sirloin, sort of, but with a giant, giant fat cap on it. Oh, okay. And okay. Uh, if you cook it the right way, it can almost the fat cap can almost come off like like beef bacon. Um, oh, okay. But like, I don't know. I liked it a lot when when no one knew what it was and it was like real cheap. Um, <laughs> I was introduced to it, I think, by Sean, I believe. Okay. And. But now it's like really trendy, so it's a really expensive cut. Yeah. And but having said all that, like I I don't ever order steak when I go to restaurants. And the reason why is I make better steaks at home. Okay. And yep. and so I, I got this all this meat and it was like, I don't know, like I, I it was fine. Yeah. But like I'm that butcher shop you guys like, right? Yeah, there's one. That's close to Sean. That's really, really good. Yeah, okay. I mean, honestly, there's it's it is likely one of the best butchers in honestly in the, the like statewide. It's okay. It's yeah, they do really, really good job. It's stuff's expensive, yeah, but they do a really good job. I don't go there often because it's too expensive, yeah. and yeah. I have butchers nearby me, mm-hmm. um, especially for like um, for certain types of of meat. I sort of prefer to do a butcher, yeah. um, then sort of i mean i don't think it's all mass market i guess but and no matter what people things are getting kind of tortured but um i have to sort of make that make sense in my brain that it's <laughs> delicious and well, and you know stuff. i don't advocate anything i don't care uh but no, i know the same way about um like if i'm if i'm going out to a restaurant if i can make the same thing as good or better I also factor in my time. Like if it takes me, you know, if it would take me hours to make, <laughs> fair enough. But otherwise, yeah, I'm not ordering at a restaurant because it's like, well, just do it at home, cheaper, as good or better. So that to me, that is kind of the benchmark when I go to a place is how long would this take me to do myself? Is this, you know, the same or better? You know, that kind of that stuff definitely factors in, you know, when I'm out, I get that. Um. Yeah. It's it's just yeah I think that's the case because no matter what like uh, unless you're doing like a like what um, like a beef Wellington or something like beef is pretty simple to make yeah you, yeah. you sear it you sear the other side you serve it you know what I'm yeah. like 
it's not complicated and like if you control the cut like you can look and see what you want like when you go to a, a restaurant you don't control the cut whatever yeah. shows up at your table shows up at your table yeah generally so like i know what i'm getting when i'm when I'm buying it, I can look and say, I don't want that one. I want yeah. that one. I, I can I can suit it to my needs. I can season it to my taste. Yeah. I can cook it to what I want. Like it's just like I just do a better job. My brother does a better job. My wife does my brother lives with me. My wife does a better job. We just it's just not really worth it. However, sorry to get back to where I talked about like the suffering of animals real quick. That's okay. This 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 kicked my ass the other day. Uh Friend, uh, friend, a someone I used to know. Um, he and his wife uh, own like a a farm of some sort, and they were like, he put up uh, the wife put up a video about like, oh, the, the pigs are getting fat, you know, put your orders in or whatever, and all the pigs ran to the fence, and it it, it reminded me of dogs, <laughs> and it fucking dude, it, like I sat there, I had I had to look at my myself in the mirror for a few minutes and say, what the fuck, dude, like. <laughs> And I, are you are you like trying to egg me out? Like I'm I'm not I'm not that guy. I'm not. No 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 no. I'm telling you that I might be that guy. <laughs> That's what I'm getting at. No, like I, I, I had mean, to, obviously you're preaching to the choir, but yeah, I'm not gonna you know. Yeah, it, it's just preach myself. Dude, like when I, when I was a kid, my my aunt had a couple of pigs that they fattened up and they cooked at a, uh, a cookout, and I remember those pigs, and I did not eat them. Yeah, I ate the other stuff. But like I knew those yeah. pigs, we we named them. They were they chased us around the yard. <laughs> like, dude, <laughs> yeah, it is a weird thing to wrap your mind around. That like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just trying to bait me to to. Be no, like, no, I, 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 Kyle. I, I I I was thinking about this when I was, I was looking at this video like two days ago. I was like, these look like a pack of dogs. Yeah. It, oh man. It, they, yeah, ass. I mean they. Of the, I mean, I guess it's, it's true of cows too. Chickens yeah. and stuff. I, I don't see that with like chickens, but no, a, a yeah, cow. They love dinosaurs. Yeah, right. And but like cows and pigs, you do see them play and, and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Um, but yeah, no, I'm not gonna. No, I know. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not asking. I'm not. I'm not asking you to take the bait. I'm. <laughs> I'm, I'm just. I'm just being real because. Yeah, yeah. But it, I mean, it, 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 yeah, it's an interesting thing, and certainly. We, we are able to consume meat like that is, you know, you know, evident with our, you know, teeth and, and um, you know, being oh, yeah. able to metabolize and everything. It's not, you know, incorrect that the consumption of animals exists, you know, but yeah. Anyway. So Ghostbusters. Um, yes. So you, you see the last one yep. and to me, they found a pretty cool hook with Spangler and like the family and like, you know, in real life, he obviously passed. So it's kind of like, like I mean, it, okay. It's all capitalism. It's all trying to make money. Obviously I get it. You know, Sony's not stupid. They're trying to make money, but like, it does seem like the people who were involved wanted it to mean something, One wanted to connect, wanted to have some sort of, you know, emotional connection to the original two. And, and then behind the scenes, obviously there was, you know, strong connections to the original with who was making the movie and everything which has me excited for this one too just to kind of see a continuation of that and, and, and you know where they go with it and i i think it's kind of cool to pay off at the end of the last one with um um uh, oh my god um ernie hudson uh, uh winston winston thank you uh you know like yeah i'm a business guy i can fund this essentially <laughs> like let's Let's open it back up in New York City, and I'm excited to see it back in New York. I, again, like I get, I think the last one was cool, and I, I get having a different location and stuff. Am I boring you? Oh my god! Looking at your watch in the wow, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to talk about Ghostbusters for too long. I was busy. No, uh, <laughs> no, I was, I'm listening. It's, I'm, my wife was asking me a question. I, I'm not season, but... I know, I know. Um, but yeah, so I'm excited to see it back in New York, and I think that's pretty cool. And um, I mean, I'm a, I love Paul Rudd, so I'm definitely yeah, I'm excited to see it. You know, I I saw someone say uh, maybe last year, or I heard someone say sorry that uh, the first Ghostbusters is a perfect movie, 
And I think that's absolutely ridiculous because it's a very flawed, very, very flawed movie. Um, but it's a weird thing that I don't have all the nostalgia for the movie, even though I saw it as a kid, because I like the cartoon better. <laughs> ah, interesting. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I like the movie just fine. Um, in fact, I don't know, maybe eight years ago, nine, down to ten, whatever, a while ago, Sean and I got to go see it in the theater as a, in a re-release oh, cool. type format, you know? Yeah. Um, it was cool because it wasn't like super digital. You could see like, you could see like the film marks and the cigarette burns and stuff. Yeah. You know, it was cool. Um, and even as a kid, I think I liked the second one better. It, and I watched it recently. It's, it's not the first one's better. Yeah. But, um, but I think I remember the second one coming out instead of the first one, which was yeah. Like I knew the cartoon before I knew the first one. You know what I mean? It's a it's a weird thing that when you're when you're born in eighty four, you know, I think the movie came out in you know, exactly. I'm born in eighty three, it comes out in eighty four. And I think I did see the movie before the cartoon. But like what you said is really interesting to me. Cause actually I think it was just yesterday I was having this kind of, it might have been with Mike from FLX. I did say it was a perfect movie to someone, and I think it was Mike yesterday. Um the first one. And then it's interesting how the second one, and this is what spoke to me that you just said, clearly trying to market it more towards kids because of the popularity of the cartoon. Um, actually, I was reading an article about this too, and I think about it, like they're not smoking in it, like just like even subtle things like that. And I think, so when it came out, as a kid, it's like, oh yeah, this is this is awesome. You know, Central Liberty is walking around. This is crazy, you know. But yeah, like as an adult, when you go back, then it's like, oh my god, there's adult humor in this that just would have, you know, that did go right over my head watching it as a kid. It was just there was still stuff that made me laugh as a kid. The spectacle of it all, you know, for the time period, good special effects, you know, like like I could believe like the the ghost was scary in the library, like. Like that was as a little kid scary to me, you know. I think that that effect still works today. Yeah, yeah, I do. I think most of the end doesn't work in the same way, but I do think some of the ghost effects. I think they're still good. I think they still sort of get your 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 hairs on your arms raised. I, I really do. I think some of those yeah. those ghost effects are good. I think that the ghost effects uh, were very good, like Slimer, all that stuff. I think very well. So you like the Stay Puft yeah. Marshmallow Man? Is that what you're saying specifically? You don't think holds up or no? I mean like those those Hellhounds. Oh yeah, the the, the not, I don't think is it technically claymation. However, they must have done that to like break uh, and all that. Yeah, that that's fair. That's fair. That what, when I think about the what, what, in my mind when I say holds up, it's the ghosts. And I think the mm-hmm. Stay Puft Marshmallow Man, the scales, the, the, the to scale, you know, city and stuff that they made, I, I think holds up pretty good. Um, I think I think that it doesn't hold up as well. But it holds up in the funness. I still enjoy the the parts. I yeah. I think that especially in with the HD stuff, it you can see the strings. Like when Sean and I went to the theater and saw it, it was it, it still kind of worked to me, and it still yeah. does. It, but when you watch yeah. it in like HDX or whatever the the 1080, yeah. whatever you want to call it, the, the get... quality of the film at that time it was different. So yeah, it would present different. What's up, Billy? How you doing, man? Hope uh, actually, I don't actually don't even know what the weather is like out the, out your way. Here we're getting actually, Mike. Not to be those guys who talk about the weather, but we're getting snow and like we got snow, then we got rain, now we're getting snow again. You guys get any weird weather today up by um, you? Well, I was just looking at the temperature. It's now 32 degrees. I think we're about to start turning to snow again. It yeah. it was snow, then rain, and and it's sleet, and it, it's kind of yeah, a mess. It's like the it's crap day. This kind of thing. Oh yeah, yeah. At one point it was it was it wasn't quite hailing, but I took Bruno for a, a quick walk, and I'm like, wait, is this little almost hail on him? Yeah, it was very. Today was an interesting day with precipitation. Good evening, guys. How how goes it? Things are pretty good on uh, on our end, on our front. Rain. 55. I mean, I'll take the 55 and rain because I have to shovel the rain. <laughs> like, I'm going to have to go out tomorrow and shovel. Um, to, yeah. Well, that sounds like last summer. Last summer, it was raining every day almost, except for your damn party, thankfully. <laughs> well, and then when we did, yeah, yeah, no, it's true. I, yeah, we did luck out. And then once uh, Shanice and I started doing the back porch at our house, like, so many weekends were raining. It's like, that's when we can work on this, you know, the most. You know, it's tough after work to come home and want to work on too much of a house project and yeah, I'm like, 
God, just so much rain. Yeah. Brutal. That's wild. Um, I actually, let's, I would talk about Ghostbusters for a little bit longer, real quick. Oh, yeah. Not real quick. But, oh, I love that. Um, I mean, I can, yeah. There's, <laughs> there's yeah. no problem. I, I, yeah. I do think that some of that first movie is like really demented. Like, I can't believe they got away with it. Like, some parts of it like the the stuff with uh was it ray and the ghost yeah talk about Ooh. something as a kid no yeah, idea no kidding it. honestly i was watching i was watching at the theater with sean like i don't remember this at all like, <laughs> and I, I i have it on like dvd and stuff i, I would have yeah. seen it i guess but I, I probably just you know i was probably like watch the movie like <laughs> <What? laughs> well, like, looking at looking at my watch i, I not paying attention is it Shrek that gets a lot of credit for being like for adults and kids? Like, there's the adult jokes. Yeah, I think that's know? true. Yeah, and I think that, that Ghostbusters. I don't. I don't. I don't want to say that they were the first, but definitely the earliest I can think of off the top of my head that had those kind of jokes or appeals where like kids could just watch it. They're not going to get scarred from any adult stuff, but there was adult stuff also layered in. You know. There's stuff like that in uh, Batman 66 as well. Oh, good call. Good call. Yeah. yeah. That's I don't an think. Example. Yeah, that's a good call. I, I think that the stuff they got away with in Ghostbusters was a little more adult. Like stuff that I was like, whoa. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Yes. That's also true. But yeah, Ghostbusters had more more adult adult stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I well, think, that's, that's, yeah, I think some stuff with Batman 66, I'm like, ah, interesting. Cool. It, you know what I mean? It's one of those. Not like, Jesus. Well, and even like. In in a movie, I, I saw Strike once, I think, when it came out, so I'm not an expert, but even some of the adult stuff, it was just more of maybe, like, referencing a movie. Like, there might have been a part where it looked like The Matrix or something, so it's like, oh, yeah, that's more like the parents maybe have seen The Matrix. I think it's like one of like those frozen, like, and then they, like, pan the camera around where it looks like they're, you know, yeah. stuck in air. Stuff like that where it's like, it's not that kind of adult. It's just more like adults would have gotten that reference to a earlier movie or a, or a, like an older movie or whatever a more current r-rated movie but that content well, wasn't sneaking r in anyway no i feel like it was it was somewhat like um honestly like the genie from aladdin you oh I mean? yeah like, yeah, yeah. it was it was stuff like that like i think a lot of stuff was like references that the, yeah. the godfather or I, yeah. I, i'm making i'm pulling that out of my my no but that's a good one and there was it's funny you bring that up because it was only a couple years ago Oh no! It, okay, so it was during the lockdown specifically, where I I can't remember how I got onto it, but it was like old YouTube clips, and that, of course the guy's name escapes me. Relatively conservative, um, uh, like news talk show host. It's one of the impressions that Robin Williams does as the genie, and I'm like watching old footage of him interviewing, um, you know, uh, I can't think of anyone's name right now. Yeah. Um, but like old political people, you know, intellectuals and stuff. And I'm like, oh my God, that's the guy from Aladdin that Robin Williams did like a quick impression of. Um, and yeah, I, I cannot for the life of me think that guy's name really. But anyway, yeah, like, or something. all these years later and I'm like, oh my God, there's a reference from the 90s that I didn't get as a kid. And I'm like, you know, almost 40 at the time when I finally got. Well, I think some of the stuff from like, because Aladdin was like 91, 92 or something, right? In that Early, area. Yeah. Was it quite 90? 90? When did Aladdin come out? To me, everything happened in 1994, but it's not true. Maybe 93. So I think, I think Lion King was like 94. I think Beauty and the Beast was 91. So Aladdin was 92, and then yep. uh, Lion King was 94. Yep, that's what I was right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I feel like um, even some of the the references that Robin Williams was making because he was just pulling them out of his. Oh blood, yeah. I, even though they were dated then, you know what I mean. Like he, well, he, was yeah, doing stuff, yeah. he was doing like stuff from like like 1920s, the late 1920s gangster movies, you know, some yeah. of that stuff, you know? Yeah. No, it's true. So it's just stuff that he thought was funny, which you know kind of works because the enthusiasm. I mean, edited or they animated it and put it in, you know. But it, like again, to the kind of the theme of this part of the conversation, you know, those were not references, certainly that I got as a kid, but my parents might have been like, Oh yeah, I remember that, or or like I know that movie or whatever, that it and I think that's an enjoyable movie. I mean, the music's so good, and, and I think it's an enjoyable uh, movie regardless. But I, it's got to be nice for a parent in that situation to have a, some stuff for them, you know, some things that they can uh, relate to. Yeah, when, whenever <laughs> I 
Oops. Whenever I see, sorry, I'll let you hear this. But whenever I see, someone says, you know, how many times I've seen Frozen with my kid. You know, <laughs> yeah, that, kind, right, that yeah, freaking yeah. movie. Yeah, and it's like, oh Jesus! I was at a kid's birthday party when around the time that movie came out, and I was I had to leave the room. I was so just offended by how horrible it was. Yeah, <laughs> I've never like, seen it. Like I, I've heard Let It Go before, obviously. But um, no, Adina Menzel is a more. terrific singer, so that works. <laughs> Who was it? Adina Menzel is a terrific okay. singer, so that song still works. Yeah, but it's not. Oh, like... no, it's a good song. Yeah. Well, even that, and then what's the other one? Like, do you want to build a snowman? I think. Mm. Um, but like those songs were just hard to escape, and I haven't seen the movie. Um, speaking of movies, I saw the movie Long Gray Line, nineteen fifty-five with Tyrone Powers. They don't make movies like that. I don't know. Like, Tell me, Billy. Gray Line. <laughs> Long gray line looks like. Oh, yes, I was. oh, it's a Western comedy. Okay. I don't think I've seen this one. It's on Tubi. That's for free. That's nice. Yeah, Vanessa. I, mean, I feel like a lot of people are experiencing precipitation today, for sure. For sure. Um, well, that was going to be my next maybe topic of conversation if we have exhausted this one. But keeping it in the spirit of movies and, and uh, I'll add television shows. What was the last thing you watched that you would recommend someone? Like you liked it enough, you're like, I'm gonna put it out there that I think you should watch this too. Nothing. I nothing, hate nothing you've watched recently. They're like, man, this is so good. I feel like I gotta recommend it to some people. Or no. someone specifically, because you know you have similar sensibilities about that kind of humor or no, and the reason why is because a lot of stuff I have watched is stuff that you, me, and Sean are talking about in the chat anyway. Oh, fair. Right? Yeah. Well, it doesn't have to be recommended uh, to me, but like Fair enough, fair enough. No, but also, and I mean this, and I'll, I'll say it to her face. Uh, if there's something that I watch and I like, I was like, oh, I can watch this again tomorrow. My wife said, I want to watch it now. And she'll watch like all 11 episodes. I walk in another room and I get mad and I start to hate the show. Nice. And then I never watch it again. <laughs> it's happened probably yeah. 150 times because she would just well, burn right through it. And I just get so annoyed. So I, I did the other thing today when I watched that documentary quite on set. And then we have a group text with another couple. And Shanice asked the woman in that uh, relationship, have you watched this documentary? So I screenshot from the living room because she was still in the bedroom, like me watching that. <laughs> like, I didn't think she would be interested. So I'm like, I'll just watch this alone because it just I like some of those like docu series and she's not as into them. So I was surprised that she was interested. Uh, so I kind of did what your wife did but um yeah i uh when i used to teach in, in uh, new york ninth and tenth grade is global studies you know, world history and in tenth grade would be the world wars and i used to show that episode of band of brothers um bastone part of the battle of the bulge and it's it's from the point of view of the medic which always thought was just kind of interesting you, you don't get a, a lot of war stuff that the focal point would be a medic. Um, so, you know, it is war, a lot of swearing, you know, blood and guts and stuff. So you know, I try to communicate, you know, hey, you don't have to watch this. Like it's in a library, like all that stuff, you know, and, and you know, kids don't want to be exposed to that stuff. So, uh, but I haven't taught world history in like seven years at this point. So I was looking at, I teach US now, which obviously also includes the world wars. So we're doing World War II, and I'm like, man, we're like a week ahead of where we were, or I'm a week ahead, you know, than I was last year. I'm like, maybe I should show the kids that episode. So, you know, my same spiel. I'm like, I used to show this in 10th grade. You guys are 11th graders, but, like, I still want to, like, put it out there. You know, if you don't like, you know, violence and blood and gunshots and all that stuff, it's cool. It's not testable information. But anyway, so I showed it in my two U.S. classes. I had a decent number of kids who had already seen it. I guess it's on Netflix now. But, like, probably an equal amount of kids when I got done showing the episode were like, wait, like, how do I watch this? Like, they were just really, like, they thought it was, like, really engaging, and it wasn't just the blood and guts. They were just like, like, this is the sixth episode? I'm like, yeah, yeah, so there's, I think there's ten episodes. This is the sixth Eight one. Ten, yeah. Starts with boot camp. Um, you know, it really Dude, does follow along the, the 101st. It's so good, though. It is right? so it good. Just, but, it, 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 yeah, so it was, like, really cool that and again, if I, I did have a couple of kids who didn't want to watch, I'm like, totally cool. Like, I get that. Um, and but for a lot of them, yeah, it just seemed like, yes, like I, this is really interesting. And, and they liked that there were the 
actual veterans at the beginning talking. And I told him, I said, yeah, it's cool. And in the very last episode, they finally tell you who they are. And then you get to be like, oh my God, I watched the actor for all these episodes. That's the real person. So um, that, that was pretty rad. That, you know, that was, so that was a cool one where I wasn't like overtly recommending something to anyone, but a decent number of them are like, oh yeah, I have Netflix. Okay, I know what we're doing this weekend as a family. I'm like, okay, cool. You said Band of Brothers, right? Yeah, Band of Brothers. Yeah, it's on, it's on HBO Max. Yeah, yeah. But I, but I, um, a decent amount of uh, HBO content is now on Netflix. I don't know if you, I don't know if you have no, had no. Netflix. Like no, I, 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 no, I was just saying like, like that's how I watch it is on. Oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. if anyone here is paying attention. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, my mom bought me the Blu ray years ago. But yeah, it is streaming um, for sure, which is a, a cool option. Oh, Vanessa, I do, you know what, Vanessa, I do remember this is going back a while. You mentioning being a math teacher. I do remember this. And this is probably like three years ago, but I do remember you saying that. Yeah, it's a good profession. Um, one of the things um, we watched, um, that me and my wife watched uh, maybe last year was um, what Flags of Our Fathers and uh, Letters from Iwo Jima. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. And uh, those are companion movies. I believe, and they're both done by uh, Clint Eastwood. Yeah, who I yeah. think is terrible as a human being. Anyway, um, so, but the films are terrific. The only thing is, I, I obviously saw uh, Flies of Our Father first, and yeah. then I saw Les Ibujima next. I wish there was a few more ties. I wish we saw like, like certain people. I, I just wish there was something yeah. that. Was, a little more tangible, but there was just they were terrific. I, I honestly, I thought that uh, Letter from Iwo Jima was even better. It was so good, and I thought um, every time you see a movie done by an American that is uh, a, a for or an English speaker, let's say that's mm -hmm. a foreign based film, it's always done in English with the British accents. <laughs> which is, really, <laughs> which is hilarious. Funny. That's interesting. Uh, and so um, seeing seeing the movie done completely in Japanese, um, and you know, and it's all like, these are all historical figures, you know, yeah. all these people, their, their their names are etched in history. So like, yeah, it was it was terrific. What a terrific movie! And, and both were really good. That's don't get me wrong, but um, yeah, I, I I have to get over the fact that because I formed an opinion pretty early. Um, between Titanic and Pearl Harbor, I'm like, like Hollywood's not doing history well, you know? And then there's no. been all these examples that's, you know, but I mean, it's always got Hollywood. It's always got, you know, added stuff for suspense or like, but it's, there, there are, there have been since those movies came out way more good and not that they have to like a documentary is a documentary life experience is life experience and a movie is a movie like i get that these are different things but there have been like really good um and faithful enough movies and tv shows that i i, I need to kind of get rid of that stigma I, I placed in my head about that stuff um but yeah well, let me, either, um, okay. everyone is telling a story i mean no matter what you do yeah. even 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 band of brothers has characters die who lived people with characters who oh, lived yeah, that died for sure, for you know? sure. so yep. everyone you're telling for a story sure. you know for sure no yeah for sure yeah and, and yeah you're not gonna get 100 percent accuracy for sure um drink a personal walker and mind haze cosmic nice how's that one billy um yeah I, that we get distribution of that don't we in, in the northeast i feel like i've seen that beer before um, we get Firestone Walker. I I only really look for like their the like uh, the bottles of really, which I really never crazy. see in New York anymore. Huh. Do you do you still get them? I I haven't bought them in years, but I still have some. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I, yeah. It's it's. I don't I don't know if they haven't been shipping to New York as much or what. Cheers, Bourbon Bounty. It's a great name. Okay, what's up to Vanessa? So, Billy, if this is to us, we're drinking the um, 2017 Goose Island um, barley wine, uh, which is super tasty. It has aged very well um, and falls under the um, wish I had another bottle category for sure. 
but also yeah definitely if anyone else in the chat is uh, drinking anything you yeah, let us know saying hi back to bounty again great name it's a great name so goose island title wondering if anyone is with me on the memorization of goose island base variants since budweiser bought them i don't know wondering wait i don't know if i Maybe I don't know if I understand. Wondering if anyone is with me on the minimization of Goose Island base variants since, like, the um, like the coffee and barley wine. I only really, I only had one really good Goose Island. I, I mean, there was the infection year, obviously, very famously in 2015. So, I mean, big yeah. dip. And what was it, 2020, maybe the base wasn't that great? Um, 2020, the, ba the base was a little bit acidic in a weird way. I right. Thought. Um, but I, I do think, I, I do think that the quality has stayed, like, pretty like good like I, I don't get nervous buying it you know it's not like i've been burned so many times where i'm like cautious like i i do think they still put out a really good product my every word is neutralization of base variants as and makes it something which oh okay okay got it thank you for the clarification because i i was I, yeah i was not right there with you before but now i totally get what you're saying oh i mean i i look back like they were doing like like heavy vanilla editions and stuff. I feel like some of that stuff was like, well, it, we, it used to have not done since I think the purchasing. I feel like that stuff would have been like marketed more to like the, the actuals. And I think some of the stuff they have done where they were doing like basically um, like editions of like, I don't know, some sort of nut extract and blueberry to make a blueberry like granola stout, which by the way, I thought was awesome. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. That but like, I feel like that is good. like that, even that was a little bit weirder than adding like orange and audit, adding vanilla, which were things that they did in the previous years, you know? Yeah, I. But because the original part of the question was since Budweiser bought them and all that was after Budweiser, I, I think this this is a super interesting one to me, and I love that Mike that you brought up vanilla, because yeah. vanilla is one of the most universal uh, flavors that people like. It, you know, mm -hmm. it's a very popular flavor. So they did have before they sold a vanilla variant, you know. Yeah, right, right. Um, That's what but I'm saying. This is interesting because they have released things like apple pie, lemon or not lemon meringue, um, uh, bananas foster, like they like like uh, a rice pudding for the this year's prop or last year's prop. So like that isn't that, this is a really interesting one for me because they have not just their props, but they have mass released ones that are really leaning into familiar. Uh, desserts or flavors. It, it's, okay. I think. Or cola. Cola. I mean, what's bigger than cola, right? You yeah, know? that's fair. That's fair. So th that's a really. I, I didn't. I would not have thought of this myself. This is very thought provoking to me. This is an interesting topic to think about. Yeah. It, it's almost like embracing a weird element of Americana. Yeah. I mean, they literally did an apple pie and a cola. I mean, what yeah. what's more but, Amer i mean a baseball themed one that's like well you know, what was the one they did or what now you're now you're, now you're <laughs> up with something i would really be into <laughs> that'd be really um, bad actually like a super caramel <laughs> one but i i thought i think like they did that that english tea one whatever that was called yeah and that was a weird one that was yeah. very strange i thought i thought they, they did one that was supposed to be um like i think it was like raisins and stuff uh, so it's just based on some type of cookie that I that I thought was a weird oh, yeah. choice. Um, but at the same time, I I I thought that that like what was it 2018, 2019, or whatever they did that 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 midnight orange. I thought I that, really was awesome. that. that was awesome. Really that was awesome. And I had one aged where the orange fell out quite a bit. And just still having that extra chocolate was amazing. Yeah, like for sure. Um, all right, so we this, all right, so this got the comments going. It looks like good, good, Dragon good. Milk, and, oh, nice. Yeah, Dragon's Milk. They, I think, I, I gotta go to the beer store because we actually got some of that triple mash in, and I don't know if it already sold out, but that's one of those beers I've wanted to try, um, and I've never seen it released um, near me before. 
So I'm, I'm hopeful. Yeah, Dragon's Milk, like, it's not as thick or whatever, you know, it, but like the price it, point. Dragon's scratch Milk, Dragon's Milk, that, that'll scratch the itch. Don't, it scratches don't. the itch at a nice price point for me, you know. Yeah. Last yeah. year's base was really good. 100% right, Billy. What's up, Rod? Yeah, hey, congrats on, I saw nine years doing beer too. That's awesome, man. I watched some of the stream. Um, yeah, super rad. Uh, we need more stout heads. Yes, yeah, for sure. <laughs> 100%. Dark chocolate, blueberry brownies. Ooh. Wow. I could get behind that. I, I have had brownies with like raspberry preserves, like mixed in that were really nice, but I think blueberry would be awesome too. My wife did brownies uh, last year that were um, like, um, like at least half of it was like dates. You know, there's no dairy, oh. no nothing. Yeah. I, I, I'll see if I can find the recipe because I really think you would like it. And maybe mixing a little bit of like blueberry preserves would be a really Wait, did she nice make addition. those for Sean's dad's? Because I remember she brought brownies. Is that what oh, they maybe. were? Maybe. I don't remember. They were good. I remember that. Yeah. I, dates. I love like date syrup. Like I, I talk about a lot in some of my reviews. And I don't know how common that is. It, it's a new thing to me. Buying, I, Trader Joe's sells it. Um, yeah. But I really like it. And it's it's like a, such a specific but similar familiar flavors but anyway yeah yeah because you'll because they come out right rod and then we buy them and then they're bigger beers so we don't drink them super fast yeah <laughs> when i was going through my basement i found almost an entire case of the 2019 yeah i i yeah finally like <laughs> three years ago i'm like i don't need to keep buying a case just because i can i yeah. can just buy a few bottles and that's fine but, but it's because when I first got into it, it was hard to get like a four pack of the 12 ounces. So then it's like, wait, I can get a whole case and they're like, I better get all. And then it's like, wait, but you're not drinking them fast enough. Like I'm accumulating them anyway. If nothing, well, not, wait, if nothing else, they killed part of the hype as now they can produce way more with Budweiser back in them. No reason to run out. and re Yeah. I mean, because these are two separate things, you know, there's quality and then there's hype. You know, and in terms of hype, yeah, I mean, the the if the supply is too high, and then the demand for whatever reason can't you know keep going creeping up like the supply does, you're going to get that lack of of hype for it for sure. Um, and we do still, at least in my area, I mean, there are still variants from prior years on the shelves for sure. Um, I feel like around here, like the variants sell out. Okay. And then around the time of the next release, they start appearing on their shelves again. Like they, they yeah. hold back like 30% of them or something. Yeah. Some a percentage. Do they mark them up too? Because sometimes they mark them up around here. I think they mark them up the first year and then they, they don't sell. <laughs> they, they should they, do. They, they, they unmark them up. They, they, don't, they don't lower them. But they'll, I think they mark them up the first year. Then the second year, like, well, I guess we <laughs> like overshot some of our the actual. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, what was it? The um, MM MSRP. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that I mean, if there's anything good about them selling, it was that they can brew more and then and, and they, they can focus basically on that product. I mean, you know, so much of the other Goose Island stuff is brewed at Budweiser facilities that they can hyper focus on some of the more experimental stuff or like the Bourbon County stuff, which. I mean, arguably, it's not a bad thing. And I'm not a big, I'm not a large corporation guy myself. And I have conflicting thoughts about buying Goose Island. Um, but that is a perk, in my opinion, is they can, those brewers can focus on these beers, which is pretty cool. I still think, sue me if you want, I still think that the, the core lineup of Goose stuff is still pretty solid. I haven't had any in a while. That Honker's yeah. Ale... If I was to see that somewhere, I would buy that in a heartbeat. I love that beer so much. I think that at Buffalo Wild Wings, I think their base beer or whatever that's like so super cheap. It's like it's like the Goose Island Kolsch. It's really good. Nice. It's yeah. really good. <laughs> there, there was a, a uh, like we would set the bar, but it was more of a restaurant that we'd go to after work, like once a month, because it was only once a week that they would do. I think it was pizzas. Like every like you know, a homemade mozzarella, homemade dough, like everything. We just did it once a week, so we'd go there once a month on that day. And they had Honker's Ale, and that's what we got because like all three of us just really liked that beer. 
just to pivot to uh, a different place uh, we would go that was closer to work more regularly, had that Sam Adams Noble Pills. Pretty solid. It's solid. What a good that beer. That was so amazing. That's another one. Yeah. I saw that. I'd buy that in a heartbeat. What a good beer. I hated that beer for a reason. It's a good, it was a good beer. But I hated it because it replaced the white ale, which I loved. Oh, okay. I was gonna say, I'm like, that beer was amazing. Uh, it was so, no, it was so good. It was so good. But the issue was, it it, re- it became like the spring beer for like two years, and yeah. it re- it replaced the white ale, which is okay. like fair to enough. To me, it's like fair enough. No, that's, that's fair. That's fair. But Nova Hills is a great beer. If they brought either of those back, I'd be happy. Yeah, that beer, I, I really like that. Uh, actually, I can still find some variants. Yeah, yeah, same yeah. same here. Um. Oops, my bad. The Parabola 2018 is Firestone brand. Yeah, yeah. But great sure. beer. I, I love Parabola. I, yeah, I, I'm a actually I'm a huge fan of their beer. Yeah, Sir Isaac was like that uh, Fig Newton thing. Yeah. The yeah. chai version was nasty tasting. Was that, yeah, the chai. Um, I love chai, but it. I, I've had some beers that were chai inspired that did not I, land. I thought the Bourbon County chai one was not awesome, but it was fine. The... When, which, how long ago was that? I think it was last year or the year before. Was it? I, okay. believe. It, 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 I might be misremembering. I don't remember. So many beers. Yeah. There's so many beers. I, I remember the Earl Grey one. I don't remember a chai one. They said a lot. I, yeah, might, be, I, might, be, I might be misremembering. I do drink a lot. <laughs> um, Dragon's Milk, all I've tried are pretty darn good. Yeah, I, I mean, I would rather have Bourbon County, Parabola. Yeah. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, for sure, but Dragon's Milk. The it, to me, it's almost like like Lagunitas. Although I think I do think Lagunitas makes a lot of good beer, but like that price point to taste ratio for Dragon's Milk is just spot on. Like it, it, it's just it's easy for me to get. Um, usually, maybe not all the variants and stuff, but like pretty reasonably priced, and it does it scratches that itch of a bourbon barrel aged style. It, it does what it needs to do. It, it's not, yeah. you know, like I, I'm, if, if I'm going to do like a really, really good New England IPA, you know, I have Treehouse near me and everything, but you know, I, if I go and get like, uh, um, the Sierra Nevada hazy beers, yeah. they're fine. Oh they're yeah. Not gonna, they're going to scratch yeah. that itch. They'll be fine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They'll be all right. <laughs> and sometimes that's all you want or need, like, and it totally, yeah, and I love the, the scratch the itch. I mean, it really is that. What's your favorite Bourbon County release of all time? Oh, man. That's a question. <sighs> that blueberry one you mentioned earlier. Dude, that was that was special. That was really special. What, what was that even called? Um, it was like Northwoods. Northwoods. Or yeah, yeah, Northwoods. That was- Nor nor wood or woods, yeah. Yeah, that was incredible. I I like midnight orange. Yeah, I thought that was awesome. I thought that 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 vanilla one you brought over to uh, for me and Sean that was incredible. Yeah, that vanilla like the OG vanilla. I mean, we had that rare um, at the was that the first beer tuber palooza? No, the second one because FLX was there, Um, and um, like that was really good. But like there are better. Like that one was just because it was so hard to get hyped more. Um, but that one is really good. Um, base, my favorite 2015, the non-infected ones, obviously. But like, to me, that was the best base I ever had. But then my it, mind is that blueberry one. It's hard to for me for the base. One, because I didn't have the 2015 for sure. Um, I think... Either Sean's was infected or we were afraid to drink it because we thought it might be. Oh, okay. So I don't think we ever drank it. So I don't know. But like I do think they go up and down, but from year to year, I can remember if I like one better than the year before. Yeah. But I can't tell if I like it better than two years prior. You know what I mean? Like Yeah. So yeah, the for, for me, just sticks out my mind as wasn't as good as other ones. But yeah, kind of like I was saying before, I mean, to me there there's like they're always within this of each other, you know, and like down here would be bad, you know, so like they're always like within the realm of I like this beer, um, yeah, but they're still sure. up and down also, you know. Yeah, um, but th- 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 that's why I like it. say, oh, I like this better than last year or I don't like it as much as last year, but yeah. I can't tell you if I like it better than 2017. And, and the only reason I know the 15 is because the one year, apparently I, I hate my liver, I did like 
a vertical, not all in one sitting, but like every few days I would have another one. Yeah. So it was a little bit easier to kind of compare in my mind what which one I like the most. Um, but yeah, so if we're going base, I'm gonna say 2015. If I'm going variants, although I, oh man, these barley wines I love. Oh, I know. Coffee oh, I know. Pops. But that blueberry one pops in my mind first. Yeah, that's funny. I think that that one it was just something I didn't. It, part of it was it was good, but part of it was I didn't expect to be that good. Yeah. So it's just, it's just sort of like when you have it, it's just like, yes. What is this? Yeah. You know, I'm not the biggest blueberry fan. So yeah. like, <laughs> when yeah. Sean's like, oh, we're gonna do this one, I'm like, okay. But that's, and that's the thing, right? Like what? if we not to use the word hype, but if we hype it up in our brains and it doesn't live up, or like we go in like I have no expectations and it blows your mind, it blows your mind even more. Uh, I think the might, midnight. Sorry, one more thing. The Midnight Orange also is important to me, I think, because it was one of the first ones I got as a variant that I got, that I, I can get on draft. I I don't know. I I think I've only had variants on draft like once or twice. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's only ever been the base. I was in Boston visiting a friend years ago. It was the first time I had it was the base, but it was the first time I had it on draft. I was like, oh my god, they have it on draft, and then. Yeah, I think that Midnight Orange year was the first year I was also able to get variants on draft. And, and I, again, I barely ever had the regular on draft. So that yeah. was really special. Yeah. Dude, a, num a few years ago, probably like 2019 or something, 2020, 2020, 2020, I think, probably, we were at a place in downtown Nashua and they had uh, Goose Island drafts, uh, drafts for like $8. And they're pouring like 16 ounce pours. I don't think they knew what they were doing. Oh, they were they doing Bourbon County 16 ounce pours? Dude, dude, I, 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 when I realized that what I was paying for, I got about eight or 10, like in an hour. Like I was with my wife, uh, her one of her good friends and her boyfriend at the time. And by the time we, we left, it, within like an hour, we were gone. And I had mm. like 10 of them. And I was like, I want this glass. I stole the glass like a piece of shit. <laughs> and I I was falling down walking yeah. into the restaurant we were going to next. I I could not believe I was getting the, I was getting big ass pours, Kyle. Yeah. But eight dollars. I just kept ordering, like, oh, you want another one? I'm like, yeah, good yeah, idea, sure. right? <laughs> hey, Over surf much. <laughs> Dude, yeah. oh, dude, it was it was brutal. We, we we had to walk like three blocks to the restaurant. It must have taken forty minutes because I was, I think I spent half of it walking backwards and falling down. <laughs> oh, it was awesome though. It was so good. It was so good, and I fell a bunch of times, and I and the glass didn't get broken. Pretty sweet. <laughs> dude, I'm such a piece of crap. I'm my, such a piece my, of crap. My <laughs> story is when I was still living in my old area in the Binghamton area of New York um they got for the first time kbs and my friend had had it before and she's like i'll drive i'll just have one but that way you can have a few because you're i think you're really gonna like this beer i'm like okay awesome and it was i think new like untapped was new and i was yep. really into untapped and they were doing a badge where if you checked in the same six beers you got like a six pack check-in badge you know like you, you drank a whole yep. six pack so I'm like, this is going to be my sixth, which, yeah, super smart to do, you know, like six of them. But I'm like, I'm not driving. And <laughs> I got to get this bad. <laughs> so stupid. Um, but, oh, I'm sorry. Um, so uh, Burby Bounty, Burby Bounty um, I miss Yeti. I used to drink a crap ton of the Great Divide Yeti. I don't remember the peanut butter Yeti, um, but I, I remember different variants. Well, I remember Yeti. And then they had the barrel aged ones, and there were maybe I had like an espresso Yeti, I remember, or maybe just regular coffee. Like, I remember variants of Yeti. I don't remember the peanut butter one, though. I have a, a Yeti coffee cup, and I got it in a gift set that said, uh, Do you like coffee? No? You know what looks like coffee? Yeti. <laughs> Oh, that's cool. <laughs> and you don't like coffee. That's perfect. Yeah, that's it was so the best. perfect. That might not be the exact quote, but it's something just like yeah, that. Yeah. And oh, so, yeah, that. it was amazing. Yeah. This is going to sound passive aggressive, and I don't mean it that way. I love Sorry. that for you. 
that because that's such a you like you because you don't like coffee like that's just yeah. like a perfect thing for you i love that yeah that's actually aggressive that's not even passive aggressive oh so just full-on aggressive <laughs> <laughs> you know me i'm a very aggressive person uh bait nut breads so good you stumped me on oh date nut breads they, oh because we're talking about dates yeah, yeah. Much, yeah i mean it just they go so well together buffalo trace out candy 90 percent of their 2k offerings i guess i shouldn't have been. 2k offerings i would pay 90 percent of that stuff to to whom i'm not sure yeah i have loose island midway recently okay can move the rope midway i don't know that one midway sure that is yeah any other goose space is good yeah i, I i'd revisit I, I i would revisit uh face pink drinking tea <laughs> that's a string of words i know those words but wait is my face pink i should be drinking tea in my uh, case Oh, I hope so. I hope so. That I hope they do bring back honkers for sure, Rod. That'd be awesome. Don't get Sam Adams where I live. I'm that's oh. No, I did know that. And that's why I was when I was talking to Joe from the Beer Patrol, we were kind of speculating um who might buy Anchor. And I, I don't remember whose idea it was, but I was thinking Samuel Adams it might make sense because then they'd have a brewery out on the west coast they could have they could add the anchor beers to their portfolio and then they would have more easy access to just brew not access but they'd have uh easier distribution to brewing and distributing goose or uh, my god we're talking about goose island so much samuel adams products out west wait uh, where's billy rossi live uh northern california that's insane like i i've had sam adams in california a bunch of times and in Hawaii, which is way further. So maybe it's just his area of, of California then. I don't know. But because I remember him commenting before not having Sam Adams. Yeah. I mean, I've, I haven't been to Southern California in probably maybe 13 years. Okay. But I never had an issue finding it. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. The, the few times I've been in California, I'll put it this way. I wasn't looking for Sam Adams. I was looking yeah. for the local. That's fair. I will recommend to try Pohala Stouts. They're world class. Don't know if you guys get them in the United States from Estonia. I'll look in our international section, but that the name does not ring a bell, sadly. But I'll definitely um, make a note of that to look next time I go to the beer store. So we have a de- I mean, it's a lot of Belgian stuff, but they do have like decent other countries. So I will make a note of that to try to find that. Um, I'm almost finished with the uh, the barley wine. Okay. I have about that much left. I was going to say, like, the problem with tr- starting drinking them when they're already, like, you know, probably 55 degrees or whatever, is that they don't warm up as much. So, like, you don't, like, get all those differences and changes and flavors. It's yeah. basically what we were drinking earlier. <laughs> yeah. I just took a sip. The only thing I would add at this point, and maybe it's because we, we talked about cola a few times, I could get, like, a little bit of a cola botanical, like, yeah. yeah. Not- high fructose corn syrup cola but like uh, actual botanical added coca-cola almost root beery kind of a thing i actually get um just slightly more um of that sort of menthol herby note that, yeah but otherwise it's basically what we had earlier and i'm yeah. not mad at it it's, it's beautiful oh no it's it's delicious <laughs> Oh, okay. So a few people are are knowing this brewery and do get it. So uh, okay. So I'm hopeful. I did. Yeah, I jotted down. I'll, I'll check. I kind of want to. Um, well, I don't kind of want to. I do plan on getting the new um, uh, Sarah about his Bigfoot. So when I go to grab that, I'll look. Hey, cheers, Keith. What's up, brother? Well, if you accidentally stumble upon some, yeah, definitely will be. We'll do. Cheers, ninety. Yeah, Keith's a great guy. Make sure if you're watching this, make sure you check out 93 Lumber. It's all spelled out, 93 Lumber. ton of U.S. beer here at the moment, so I got to go and try and snag some goodies. I mean, there, there's, I don't know, a lot of countries producing good beer, that's for sure. Oh, that's a fact. When I was in Spain about six years ago, me and my wife got married, I was blown away at how awesome, like, some of those crap breweries were, and they were everywhere. Yeah. There's so much good stuff, you know? 
I, I was shocked. We went to Bordeaux because uh, my wife had uh, a conference there. So you're, I mean, talk about wine country, you know, like Bordeaux. And um, found a couple craft breweries. I was like, wow, okay, let me check them out. Let me see, you know, in, in one craft bar too. And yeah, cool stuff. And like super appreciative to have, you know, a, a U.S. guy who's like, and, and I did partake in wine too, obviously, but I was like, oh, you yeah, know, this is, this is awesome. Like, if you're in Bordeaux. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to. Like, if you, yeah. I don't think they let you leave the region without drinking a gallon of wine, but a day. Uh, yeah, 10, 16 ounces. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah. Dude, I was completely. It, it was it was awesome and not really a good idea. I'm not even like it was. It was hilarious. That it actually worked out. <laughs> that I didn't so, die is what I'm getting at. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah no, I'm glad you, I'm glad you pulled through. Uh, all right. So this is what he meant. Allocated bourbon. So bourbon that is underproduced and allocated specific places to keep the price driven to peak points. So 90% of what they distill and age to keep the price of the other 10% high and prestigious is other. Uh, like, okay. I get it now. That's interesting. I did not know. I, 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 I'm getting more and more into spirits, but I don't know much about that industry. So that's interesting to me. I didn't know what I was doing. Ordered both me and her big foot. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you're not married. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> my move. That's, I, great. that's, I, that's I, a great story. <laughs> that's great. No, that is great. Um, my move, and I did it last night when we went to Fiden's with uh, Mike and his wife, um, is I just got two beers and I let my wife try both. And then she drinks the one she likes more. And I drink the other one. Um, so that's that's much more boring version of your story. I like that. That's awesome. Can I tell the quick story of my wife uh, yeah. and I getting engaged? So um, I was I was in the restroom. I, not, I think it was like shaving or something. So romantic. Yeah, yeah, but I walked out of the bathroom because I heard my wife come in, and she was she was on one knee holding a four pack of Hetty Topper back when it was hard to get, and she proposed to me with a four pack of Hetty Topper. That, that is, is not a joke. That it's a dead, freaking serious story. That is awesome. That is so awesome. And now I want yeah. a Hetty Topper. <laughs> I I have Hetty Topper in my fridge. Nice. We if you if you don't want to said he come here to watch Ghostbusters with me at four thirty, Kyle. Yeah, yeah, you could yeah. add a heady topper. As well. <laughs> the um, they, they've been dropping a little bit more regularly. So the next time I yeah. see a heady, um, I, I'm definitely gonna have to drive to the store and grab some because every time they post, I'm like, oh yeah, and then they sell out pretty quick by the time I get there. You know, so it's like next time to prioritize because every time, every time I open it. And I smell it. Yeah, it just brings it back to another time. My my eyes roll in the back of my head. Oh, like, this is so good. Um, Sam Adams used to be better. I mean, I mean, everything used to be better, right? I, yeah i I haven't had a ton of their stuff lately, other than that no the the no alcohol one recently that I thought was really good. Um, I'm trying to think what I uh, yeah. <laughs> other than that one. Honestly, actually, Mike, the last time I had anything from Samuel Adams, other than that non-alcoholic one about a month ago, was probably on my birthday when we did the vertical of Utopias. So it's been a while. So I, I really can't speak to Sam Adams' quality. I I haven't even tried the new uh, Boston Lager. I should. I just haven't yet. So that's oh, an interesting, interesting story. I, I do want to try it. Sarah Vetta was going to buy Anchor, but it fell through. And I, I'm okay. That's. I could see them trying, but I'm also I also kind of wonder why. Like when they already have the the California beautiful facility, that's interesting. Yeah, but they don't do any. They don't do a California comment. You know, maybe they're just trying to get that. Yeah, recipe yeah. Right. I mean, I could I could see them wanting to buy the recipes or in the brand yeah. or whatever. I guess I'm like focused on the brewery also, like the actual physical brewery. Well, I think that the, the well, the, actually, that's the thing is that's how you make a proper California comment is with the Anchor Steam. Um, I do think that um, Anchor has lost, I mean, almost all their value. They, it can't be that expensive to buy. I I would, like, relatively speaking, I mean, more money than you and I have, I'm going to go yeah, out on yeah. a limb. But, yeah, I think relatively speaking, you're right, yeah. We should call and find out. Maybe it's not more money. <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe we do have enough money to buy Anchor. 
sometimes I just want to say, Adams, you know, I, 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 I think the sentiment is the same. Like there, sometimes I just want tried and true or things I used to drink and enjoy. And it's like, oh wait, those are still good. I mean, some of them, my palate's changed or whatever, but a lot of stuff, it's like, every time I have, it's like, why haven't I had this beer in eight years or something stupid See, like that, you know? This is the thing, and this is a fact. There's no such thing as a better shower beer than either A, Sierra Nevada Pale, <laughs> or B, Sam Adams Boston Lager. It's just this shower beer recipe. That's what those are. Yeah, <laughs> so Mike knows a little bit. I, I don't think I've ever talked about this publicly. Speaking of shower beers, I was trying different beverages in the shower, I don't know if you remember this, like, me talking about it. I was like, all right, try to Powerade. And I don't even really drink Powerades, but I'm like, it doesn't taste the same. And then I forget what else I like, to try it. Just, you don't remember me texting you? Like, it doesn't taste I know, I remember this. This is all coming back to me now. <laughs> it was just like, like, there is something about having a beer in the shower that hits different than other things. I'm like, Maybe just some cold lemon water, like just the hot water of the shower with a cold beverage would be nice. And like in a steam room and, and maybe you do have like some cucumber water or whatever, like that is nice. But it, it did not hit the same way as, as a beer. A, a Sierra Nevada Pale is the top shower beer ever. An ice cold Sierra Nevada Pale. I'm telling you right now. And um, I joke about this a lot because, you know, honestly, I probably had five shower beers my whole life. But I, yeah, I did have, have yeah, maybe half a dozen my yeah. <laughs> but I did have one probably a couple weeks ago. I, I'm sure I would have sent it to the group. Um, but I did Old Mission by Schilling. Okay, and that was a close number two. <laughs> it was so, it was so good. Yeah, it was good. But well, okay, uh, so Bourbon Bounty, like the 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 cases. I mean, there were however many years in a row, I would get the Sam Adams uh, Christmas, like winter case, and the Fancy? Saranac. Fancy? Yeah, yeah. And the Saranac one. And I, if I remember correctly, both were 12 packs and both would have two of each. Mm -hmm. So I would take one of each out and then I'd give my dad one 12 pack. So he had, and then I'd keep the other one. And that was pre me doing the channel which is then just trying to get new stuff to review, but like just the memory of it, the like, Oh yeah, it's that time of year again. And the beers, you know, it's just really special. So I, that, that's a good memory. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. Um, I used yeah, to, heavy wig man. I used to like going to um, Wegmans and building my own six packs. Yeah. And by that, I mean, around Christmas, I would build six packs of Fezzy wig only. <laughs> nice, the, the, nice. the beer guy was well, laughing at me because it's ridiculous and, yeah uh, and he it the sign clearly says one of each beer tops you know and i i go i'll go to the the paper it in the uh on the you know the, whatever the conveyor yeah. or whatever you do when you go to the store and um sometimes they're like i thought it's only supposed to be one beer i'm like Oh, I didn't know. My my bad. Yeah, God, don't worry about it. Beep, yeah, beep, beep, beep. I'm sure the, yeah, <laughs> the cashier really cares to enforce. So I, I would. I got like probably a couple years in a row until they stopped. Doing, oh, they, oh, they restarted the busy, but they haven't yeah. been in a few years. Yeah, until yeah, which recently. Is cool. But I, I did a couple six packs of fezzy, and uh, in fact, one time I was like, "Oh, it's only four guys." Like, I'll get you two more. He went and broke <laughs> open a case. He got me two more. It was the best. That guy ruled. <laughs> bring it full circle. That's the first time I had uh, Bourbon County. It, there, three of them were in the make your own six pack section because someone took one of the four pack and put it in. So that the people work and they're like, well, we can't sell a three pack. It comes in a four pack. So they took the other three. So I put all three in a six pack and I, because at the time I just knew there were people who really liked that beer, but I had never had it. So I'm like, well, this is a cheap way to try it. But of course, at the time, I think you could get a four pack, maybe like it was like nineteen ninety nine for a four pack. So it was still much cheaper to get the three. I think they're charging nine nine ninety nine for those make your own six packs. So I mean, it was still a huge savings. And then like so, then I tried. I'm like, oh my god, I love this beer. I'm gonna go back and buy a four pack or two. Yeah, so good. And pay more. Real smart. Should've, oh yeah, should've, should've, like, you yeah. should have you should have hit a bottle. I, I should have came bought, back the next day and got the three pack. I should have bought all of 
them that they had. <laughs> yeah, hit the like for sure. Good call, Bourbon. <laughs> 10% of Buffalo Trace is obtainable and sort of available. Well, that's interesting. So the kind of like what I was saying before about trying uh, a beer that's aged in uh, you know, some kind of barrel and then liking it enough that I want to buy the spirit. I have the Bigfoot aged in the uh, uh, E.H. Taylor, but I haven't tried that beer yet. Yeah. It does make me want to try it. I'll just keep going through the comments. Um, their cherry wheat is a good beer to have if you don't like. That was the first one. Oh, <laughs> that's why he stood up. Well, there you go. All right. So, do you think that's worth grabbing a bottle of? I got it for extremely cheap, way okay. cheaper than it's. Yeah, I think I got, this bottle. I think is MSRP is like fifty bucks. Something I think I got. I, think I got it for like thirty six dollars. Oh wow. Okay. So yeah, I. Because I haven't tried that the Bigfoot yet that's aged in it, um, but I do want to obviously try that. I, was, I wanted to do it at Beer Tour Palooza last year, but obviously I was doing the porch. But anyway, um, it just it's just really cool to try the spirit with the barrel aging. Like it's just it's it's cool to see. Like okay, this is what it specifically tastes like as a spirit, and then what am I getting of that in the you know the beer, yep. the cherry wheat? That was an because when I first got into craft beer. I was one of those people that like Blue Moon was a big one where I'm like, oh, beer yep. can taste different than just macro lagers. Mm -hmm. And then I really liked fruit forward beers, purple, a bit as purple haze, uh, oh, Sam yeah. Adams, cherry wheat. Yep. Um, someone had a, a pomegranate wheat, it might have been Saranac. They also had a blackberry wheat. But yeah, like those fruited wheat beers were like a huge gateway into me trying other craft beers. So yeah, the cherry wheat, good call, Pop. I, I oh sorry I think it's something to say. I drink the pure beer, of course. <laughs> hey, you know what? It, it, it's so funny. Mike, does that ever happen to you where people are like, "Oh, well, you're like a beer guy, so like you're probably gonna judge me for drinking this," and it's just like I don't care what you drink. Like, just have fun, enjoy your life. Like, I couldn't care less what you're consuming. Oh, I care. Oh, you okay? Okay. No. Well, then, only the best stuff in front of Mike, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I will. <laughs> I will life. buy. I buy a 30 pack of Genesee or uh, our Miller High Life. It happens. <laughs> you, Jenny Cremo, I, I was talking to a buddy at work there because we were talking about the eclipse coming up. And he was telling me that the Genesee brewery is doing like a special beer for it and like, and all that. I'm like, cool, good on them. Like, you know, capitalizing on the event and having a beer and stuff. But that's what we got talking about. We're like, you know, the, the price point to like taste of the Genesee Cream Ale and stuff. Totally worth it. The Kolsch, the grapefruit Kolsch. When we were in Albany last year, we went to uh, a breakfast spot. It was a restaurant that had breakfast, but we went twice in the two days we were there because it was that good. And by the way, I think they were they had um, cans, twelve ounce cans of Jenny uh, Kolsch, the grapefruit Kolsch, for like a dollar fifty. Oh, nice. nice. So, I got a couple of them. It was awesome. I don't remember which place you got. I, I remember like recommending some places. But I don't remember where you guys ended up going. But it, good. It was awesome. weird. Like you, you, you waited in line. It was a long wait, but like you go to like these, like almost like these black iron gates to get in, and there's like a courtyard. Oh, yeah, gate. yeah, the iron gate. Yeah, that, that's oh, yeah. every place. Iron gate. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that place yeah. was awesome. It yeah, was so good. Cool. The food was incredible. The first yeah. day. I didn't realize that they changed the menu so often because the next day the, <laughs> it was different. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, they we've we've gone yeah, like a handful of times and yeah, we've we've been happy. Small batch bottle and bond is really good. Wood sugars noted bourbon, very clean with a good base note. Nice. Yeah, I I'm, just because I don't drink um the spirits as much as beer, I, I have maybe six bottles at the moment of stuff spirits um no no it's probably no it's eight it's eight but anyway um um and i'm not opposed to getting more but i kind of want to try that big foot big foot that's aged in that to see if i like that aspect of it too before i buy a bottle uh-oh thomas thomas what time is it wait so is thomas just waking up or is he like way past his bedtime I think it's like six hours from me. I probably. Oh, I thought it was more eight hours ahead. Oh, maybe, of me. maybe. 
I was thinking it was like 4.30 in the morning there. I don't know, Thomas. Or like, what time is it there, brother? It's, okay. Oh, okay. So Mike was, I was thinking more like eight hours. Okay. So you're just, you're up late, man. For, in my, like, that's what I was telling Mike from FLX last night. Because we, we hung out at Fidens until like 10. And I was like, man, I was asleep at 8.30 the night before. <laughs> like, I get, I get up so early for work. So, like, the idea of being awake at 1.30 in the morning not I don't know. got back from work just now whiskey festival oh awesome very cool how, how did it go thomas like was it a fun event you like, you're right, man. like this is still delicious but i don't have a lot of <laughs> that's a great that's a great <laughs> it's a great picture to put up um, I didn't put that up. I just I just had to blow my nose. I didn't want to do it. On oh yeah, no. I've been um, sniffling here for like for like the last hour and a half, and <laughs> keep wiping like a fucking weirdo. So I had to. I felt good, bro. Um, yeah, no, I just I um, all I was saying is you're right. Like this hasn't changed much, um, but is it still as good as when we first get, opened it? Yep. <laughs> this this beer is so good. Oh, I sorry that was a new comment. Yeah, Thomas, if you're still on, I'd love to know um, how the uh, whiskey festival was. Okay, okay, that's Dan's avatar. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah also, I just joke, I, live quickly saying hi and chilling a bit before working in a few hours. Oh man, she just got home and you got to go back to work in a few hours, man. That's tough. I, I, oh man, you got a full shift and everything tomorrow. Well, I guess I even tomorrow. Excuse me. From your point of view, it'd be just later today. Oh, this is okay. So side project, I haven't had a ton. Um, what was, I, I think I've had two proper and then um, I might have had some like at shares, but I haven't had much. I, I Oh man, what was the one? I had something that was fruited. I cannot uh, think about it. I'm just pulling this up because Mike's showing them. So Thomas, this is the Goose Island 2017 barley wine. It's not the year that they put coffee in it. Uh, it's just a straight barley wine aged from burn barrels. Yeah, side project. Oh my goodness, I cannot think of. There, there's a beer that I'm thinking of. I cannot pull the name. Let's see if I can find it. Nah, I might not even even have reviewed it. Um, but yeah, like it was a fruited. Was it a while now? I cannot remember. But yeah, no, I've not had a lot of side project. Mike, have you had any side project? It sounds familiar. Um, I said I'm the worst beer drinker of all time. <laughs> I couldn't even tell you half the stuff I drank last week. Yeah, they're um, they St. Louis, right? While you're looking it up, yeah, the reason why I kept looking back earlier and giving a funny face is you said you have like seven or eight bottles or whatever of spirits. Yeah. I have eleven bottles on top of my of my liquor cabinet. That's just on top. That's not that's not the top <laughs> shelf. That's well, the top of the of the cabinet. <laughs> but yeah. So it, to, okay. So it's kind of like the stouts and barley wines and stuff. Shanice doesn't drink spirits, so it's just me every once in a while wanting a spirit. Um, so I don't buy a ton, but I do keep vodka, and like my daughter who is of age. Uh, you know, she'll mix that sometimes with some juice and stuff. I, I'll use, I, I do like vodka. We do uh, Moscow mules. My wife and I do like Moscow mules. And then yeah. I do penny la vodka like once or twice a month. So I use some vodka for that. So um, vodka, we go through somewhat quickly, but like the whiskeys and bourbons and stuff, it, 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 it takes me a while to drink a whole bottle where I'm like, oh, there's room. I should go get another bottle, you know? Yeah. My click cabinet got full over the last 11 years it doesn't get consumed much Did, does your brother josh drink drink it too does your wife drink it at all or is it just you drinking it N none of us i i drink okay. occasionally i'll have like a, a little bit of whiskey or something you know but well, like oh go ahead but like but I'll, I'll buy like oh i'll do make this drink so i'll buy this bottle of spirit i try to try it I'm like, yeah not that great okay and now yeah. this beer is just in, <laughs> it's well, just in the the bottle it's in the the um athletic uh, non-alcoholic review 
uh, which was a very, very good review, FYI. And so their dad did a athletic review. And I'm like, you know, I kind of want to have a spirit and see how this is. As, and this was off camera after I reviewed it, but I was still drinking. I'm like, like, w- but with the beer chaser, you know, like, but the non-alcoholic beer chaser, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I, I did pour one and I'm like, oh, this this is kind of nice because I'm like, it was, it was kind of a good move because I didn't want to get, it was a work night. I wasn't trying to like drink too much. So I was like, okay, so I got a little bit of the spirit, which is nice. Still having my beer that I like to have, but without the added alcohol, it, it was it was a nice little experience. Uh, it's been fun, but I have to drop. No, yeah. Bourbon Bounty, This I really appreciate the, uh, the, the comments and the conversation starters. That was awesome. Cheers and have a good night. Just had a silent barrel. T- oh, nice. Awesome. Yeah, I, I've heard that's really good. Um, I've had that barley wine. It was a bomb. Thomas, this beer is so good. And I'm glad you were able to get it over there. Thomas is about eight years behind on the slang. Or- <laughs> <laughs> I- <laughs> well, it takes a while to get over to him from the American slang. You know, it'll, it'll be nice, you know, next year when we start saying lit. Um, <laughs> I, I haven't gotten to use any slang. In a long time. Oh yeah, any, that, any comments like. Yeah, side project does some cool stuff. Um, I like a grisette. I haven't had a grisette in a while. Yeah, I haven't had one in a while either. Yeah, Dan, I remember you talking about or even posting some pictures of some of the spirits you've you've been getting lately. I, a buddy of mine brought me some Elijah Craig. I don't remember which one specifically. Um, I got the Angels Envy. I just bought a Larceny. Um, one or two of the Uncle Nearest bottles. I found a nice vodka. It's like pretty cheap and it's like really good and it's actually organic even. Um, so that's been a good, it's like 22 bucks for a big old bottle. I'm trying to think what else I have in there. A brandy. Maybe it is more like six bottles, but anyway. Hey, I'm on fleek. What was that one beer? It was a stout, and I think it didn't have Fleek in the name. It was like a really good stout. Almost drank like uh, 1050. Was it on Fleek? What was that beer? Oh, my God. I Honestly, I've heard this before, but I don't know what it means. So. It was so good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's still waters on Fleek, and it, it kind of drank like um, a little bit like 1050. It was so good. Uh, yeah, I had that stout. Yeah, that, that was a really nice stout. Yeah. Yes. There's Thomas using uh, language from the uh, 1800s. Uh, yeah, there you go. The best thing about Thomas and Lincoln <laughs> is that he speaks English better than you and I do. That's a fact. <laughs> so I, I, I was actually, I was shocked. I was shocked. They're like, how good his English was. Like, honestly, at first I didn't hear his accent at all. Right. Like, you know what I mean? I was like, God. Damn it. <laughs> it's wild how good, like, he just, it's, it, okay, you, yes, your your diction is better than mine, and I live in an English-speaking country. It, his really his sentence English structure is better. Oh, everything, <laughs> grammar. Better. Also, it's like, you know, it's Spanish in high school, like, I got a little bit left, but, like, I speak English primarily, and his English is better than mine. My favorite recently has been a Mitcher's Rye, also 1792, full-proof, store pick, single barrel. You stumped me on both of them. That's how I had something done too. You've you've had that, or you know of that? Yeah, I've had it. Oh, nice. I don't know if I had, I don't know if I had the full proof, but I'm familiar with something done too. Full proof store pick single. So the store pick, um, certain stores will get right. like uh, certain like uh, types of like single releases or whatever. That that's how I yeah that's how I interpret it. I, Buddy of mine out in Colorado, he's talked about that. Where like this, the liquor store he works at will go and do that kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thomas, you're the man, dude. FLX ever had any Templeton? I've not. I haven't I either. Had the rest, but I've but I had it. I I do. I am curious if Dan at FLX is jealous that I hung out with Mike last night and he didn't. I don't know if that's. I I do wonder if that's the reason why he keeps commenting right like he's just like because in you know all things to be fair i probably should try to do something with dan because Mm. we're doing this because i did that thing with sean that's coming out monday yeah but i've been working last night so i probably should try to do something although we in all seriousness dan we we got those brewery beers like we we got to like we all do 
we, right? Like we got to try to, as we know, schedules are tougher. We got to try to like get something going while you were schmoozing it up. I'm like I watched the live stream here after your Yeah, I know. Yeah, it was um, big night in Albany last night, mostly because Mike was in town. But yes, also the New York uh, craft beer uh, thing was happening. Um, I saw yeah uh, a couple of breweries I like got medals. That was pretty cool. But I I, I got to read up on who won what. Vanessa's back. Hey, what's up, Tanner? How you doing, my Team Mike. Always Team Mike. Team all the mics. Oh, um, <laughs> my least favorite thing to talk. No, not really. Um, yeah, so um, I was super excited today because I was thinking it was going to rain more than snow. Um, so I would be able to see if my basement's still leaking anywhere and I could, you know, try to like patch anything. But it ended up, I went down many times and there, no water was seeping through. But my, my wife said that there was one time she saw some water seeping through. So I still have to wait to try to catch anywhere there's water coming in, patch that spot too, then wait again, see if it stopped. Um, and then I'll, um, she found some breathable paint. I was going to use dry lock. This is like so nerdy, like like home repair stuff. But um use this more breathable paint instead of dry lock and then i'll put some shelves up the short version it's going to be a while till i have the background i want it's just I, I, it drives me crazy having this like creepy basement background but i appreciate you asking but yeah it's it's definitely a source of stress right now yeah what's up thomas definitely not team dan <laughs> all right so um, i got that, this that is my last sip my last sip yeah sit all right. As good as just as first. delicious as the first. As good what as a believable first. beer. Let's bang out these comments and wrap it up. All right, brother. Sounds good to me. Yeah, FLX. Like, yeah, anyone who's watching this who doesn't watch Keith at ninety three lumber spelled out ninety three lumber. Watch him. Definitely check out uh, Tanner at East Coast LQ. Um, Dan and Mike at uh flx beer reviews i always point the wrong way <laughs> i'm not good on the camera that way uh I, if you're watching on my channel make sure you check out mike he's the better half of the nerd sense channel um and if you're Literally. watching his channel nerd sense check me out and no hype beer reviews oh live stream idea getting bur bourbon barrel aged beers and having a bourbon with it we're all dead in two hours <laughs> it's a good idea though yeah. hi vanessa back Tanner's here. I'm out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Tanner, don't take this personally, but <laughs> we're all out. <laughs> That's too don't fun. take it personal, uh, but you just said Team Mike, not Team Dan, so don't take it personal when you say Tanner's here. I'm out. <laughs> and no one's Team Sean. I, I, I will point that out. No one tonight has said Team Sean. That's interesting. Not Sean Stanley. <laughs> and he didn't even, like, jump on to, like, you know, enter the chat or anything, man. Uh, he, he's dealing with some some crap at home. I don't think he I knows know, about the internet right he's now. Stuff to deal with right now. I know he's he's super busy. Uh, don't waste your time, Thomas. <laughs> oh, actually, can I? Um, the Ghostbusters conversation. I was gonna say, can I finish up that Ghostbusters thing I was gonna say earlier? Yeah. All right. So I don't know where I was going with it. I, I know where, where I was going. I don't know where I I was with it, but like. Uh, when I was re-watching the first two films in preparation to watch the third one when it came out, I didn't see it in theaters. I watched, I bought it when it came out and I, on a, on a video, VOD, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Fandango app, right? Yep. Yeah, it was Fandango now. It was Voodoo at the time. Yeah. Now it's Fandango. So um, I was, I was actually, you know, even though like we talked about the second one having, being a little cleaned up, I was actually surprised at how dark it was. It was pretty okay. dark, you know, and uh, I did not, although I do plan on it. I do not. I did not watch the twenty sixteen reboot, whatever. What, I don't know what year it was, but whatever. The, I did not watch that one. Yeah, I, I do plan on it. I I, I, I it would watch it. I mean, it's it's definitely like a different universe for sure, like the multiverse kind. Of, yeah, it's definitely a different universe. Yeah, yeah, Sean. Yeah, I didn't yeah, think Sean would watch it. How does it feel, Sean? That really. How does it feel? <laughs> well, and again, that's the funniest thing is. Sean Keith and I, that was like two weeks ago, it just hasn't been posted yet. So this seems like the first yeah. of me Mike gets, up you guys. Mike gets there first. <laughs> Mike was there first. 
Uh, so, Thomas, earlier we did oh, yeah. we talked a lot about Ghostbusters for probably like I don't know twenty minutes, half an hour. Yeah. Eh. Um, nothing but, wrong with it. I love it. Yeah, yeah. But when I was gonna, when I went to watch the third one, and like I said I I'm just not I like Ghostbusters. Yeah, it's fine. But I'm not eh, not that See, not I'm that one, big. Yeah, yeah, I don't. Yeah. Um, so I was actually surprised how much. And now I'm tempering this, but how much I liked the fourth, the what I don't even know how we to, we're gonna number them with afterlife, right? After what's called, uh, yeah, just the uh... yeah. I, I thought, and this is the point I was gonna make earlier, is because you said that you liked it and you got you got the new ones to be New York and everything. I was surprised at at how much reverence it had to the originals and how much it felt like a legitimate success like a successor to in all the ways without it feeling without it feeling like shoehorned and weird and yeah. I, I thought it, it felt like a legitimate reverent kind of irreverent to um follow up I, I I don't know how they could have done it better because if they went and did like something like the New York one first I don't think it would have worked as well I think we would have all while well, you're doing a thing like that, and blah blah blah. I thought that they did a really cool thing. I thought it was interesting how they made Spangler seem kind of like a weirdo at first, and like this, like you know. But they ended up tying it circled back to he was planning everything, and he you know he ended up passing away. And I I even liked his his post death cameo. I I, yeah. I know that some people are like oh, that's, uh, who cares who cares. You know, yeah. I, I saw him and it made me happy. I don't care. Yeah. It was handled because it, it's an interesting moral thing, all that stuff. You know, when someone passes away in real life to use their likeness or not, it was handled so, I mean, just nicely. So, so, you know, yeah, respectfully. Uh, respectfully. Yeah, for sure. And, and it was just, it was the heart of the movie, you know, and I, I, I agree with you a hundred percent that it, it, it it felt deserved and earned and like all that stuff. It wasn't, you know, again, it is all for money. I get that. I'm not an idiot, but if you're going to try to have it tie into the originals and have an emotional impact and a connection, it was a great way to go. And it definitely felt, you know, earned. Yeah. So that's what I'm tying it all into. Like I was shocked at how much I liked it. Um, yeah. Still, it's not like my favorite thing ever, but it's enough for me to watch the next one. So yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly right. Uh, I love this. I refer to Mike as forty nine percent. Yes, I, I, his Mike, his Mike. <laughs> I feel like it was actually pretty. Good. Yeah, for sure, Thomas. Yeah, first time I had Bourbon County's coffee toast. That was absolutely good. Yeah, yes, I definitely have had experiences with beer like that where it's like yeah, so chasing the dragon. I like trying to have that same experience. I, I had a. a Belgian style quad. I don't know what company made it. I don't know anything else, but it was aged for a long time. A buddy of mine opened it up at a share and it blew my mind. And I've been chasing that dragon ever since. Mike is on point. Mike was on point. Also true. How is Thomas still awake? <laughs> we, just, we had this conversation nice about 25 minutes ago. <laughs> I see that a small Dutch pumpkin. <laughs> Are there even pumpkins there? I, I have so much to learn. I was waiting for you, Adam. That's funny. You had me at hello. Okay. I don't know how we get better than that, Kyle. Adorable. Oh my god. No, but I, I yeah, yeah. I, I I'm all empty. I can fake cheers. Um, all right. You want to wrap this up, or I mean, so, again. I'll do whatever. So you good? Yeah. Listen, I'm, I'm having a good time. I, I could keep going. It's up to you, man. Yeah. I I just want to show you something. Real quick. We squash pumpkin. <laughs> That's funny because pumpkins are squash. No, I just I got my little you know Ghostbusters tin oh, nice. box that like I have like cords and stuff in. But like like you were saying. The cartoon, like I, I love the movie. Whenever, at whatever age I was, my mom's like, I think you'll like this movie. My, my mom got me into um, comedy and post-apocalyptic stuff, which the, the first, 
you know, fair enough. But like it kind of like like Ghostbusters is kind of like, you know, I mean post apocalyptic, but like definitely, you know, fit her sensibilities and, and what became my sensibilities. So whatever age I was where she's like, I think you'd like this movie, we we should watch it. Um but yeah, that cartoon really I mean, because we're you and I are basically this I'm I'm a year older, but like we're you know definitely ob- observed pop culture in real time at the same time, you know? And that cartoon for sure was even more the catalyst for me liking Ghostbusters as a thing. Yeah. So, so we have the commonality there. Um, but as an adult to rewatch anything that's has the word Ghostbusters in it, it would be that first movie is the most you know i i yeah. i'd rather watch that than rewatch the cartoon as an adult or the second yeah. movie but like no, I, still I, I, would, would I would be the same way i i, yeah. I feel the same way like but it, this is the thing is when i first watched the movie it was weird to me that slimer wasn't like part of the team yes <laughs> you yeah. know what i mean right yes it's like wait a second like... yeah. <laughs> that's so true um this is the end <laughs> it's, all right And then I also wanted to be a comedy writer. So yes, this is the end is like the perfect movie for me where it's people who it's post, it's funny, it's post-apocalyptic and it's not all of those people are comedy writers, but like a lot of them are or comedy performers. So yes, this is the end is one of those things that felt very specific for me. Like, like we made a movie just for you, Kyle. Yeah. It's, (laughs) really it's not post-apocalyptic it's like pre and present apocalyptic. well yeah it's like <laughs> it's like a, a rapture apocalypse yeah. happen yeah. yeah that's fair it's not post it's it's current to be technical yeah that is, <laughs> that's true um but yeah that movie when it came out it did it felt but but even like it, and you and i i don't think have even talked about it but you you ended up getting rid of disney plus right oh yeah because they have the new x-men cartoon 97 yep. and they re- they released the first two episodes on the same day and that also felt like this is made for you specifically like like like, like the, the the whole universe got together and said we're gonna make something just for you like, it just felt that specific um but yeah every once in a while beer uh a media book like or you know whatever can just feel so specific to a person I... For sure. I loved the X Men cartoon when I was a kid. Yes, I did try to rewatch it. Uh, I think through the Disney app, I believe. Uh, yeah, right before I, right before I, I got rid of it, and it was a little bit like not disappointing, but I was like, oh, I don't remember it looking this way, and and yeah. so, but like it was cool in all the right ways. I still liked it, and I still that that theme is still like you know top it, ten of all time. Right, like it still lands. It, it that that is unapologetically still a banger. Like it's just oh, an awesome song. I I don't mean top ten themes. I mean top ten songs. <laughs> it's, it's so specific. It's just so good. You know. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, it's amazing. What else we got? On popular opinion, Men in Black cartoon is better than the Ghostbusters cartoon. However, Ghostbusters films are mode. I I don't even know. I. No, no, I did watch some of the. Um, I forgot that there was a Men in Black cartoon. I did watch some of them. Not enough for me to weigh in on this as a topic, but I do remember watching that as a cartoon. Um, I have like seen those memories Black unlocked. Films. What's that? I've never seen the Men in Black films. Oh, really? Nah. I, I would say the first one is worth watching. I saw like a couple of different, couple minutes of it. My comments. I was like, well. Well, this is not brother. I, I, yeah, I, I, again, like, I love comedy. I love sci fi. So, like, okay, you know, enough of like aliens and comedy. Like, it, it, it's an easy sell for me. Um, I think the second one was, I mean, I, and sometimes, I mean, sequels can be as good or better, certainly. Um, but yeah, the first one, Men in Black, I think, was, was pretty special. Um, you know, I don't. I don't want to say lightning in a bottle, but I, I think they did a good job with it. But yes, I do agree. Like Ghostbusters, like would be. I'd rather watch Ghostbusters than Men in Black. Yeah. I do think. Now this is not a obviously because I didn't watch Men in Black. I do think it's a big part of things that we like is a lot of it's nostalgia, and I do. Oh, think for sure. That, that people. The only way to get, the only way to get a 
true sense of something's quality is someone to watch it out of time. But the only yeah. way to get a true sense of something impact is to see it in its time. It's a weird thing how that works. You and I have talked about this. It's been a while for me. Wow. <laughs> like, um, I'm picking this movie just completely at random. It, it, no deeper meaning at all. And, and I do like this movie. But something like Endgame. Yeah. After I watch it, I, I don't think my opinion is like to someone else is worthwhile. I have to watch it a second time six months later, whatever, but I have to watch it a second time to then like really give thoughts on it. Um, yeah. Cause, cause like, I'm so like, Oh my God, you know, like Captain America, you know, wielded Molnir and it was freaking awesome. And I got on my scene. You know, and again, I do like that. I, I think Infinity War was better, blah, 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 blah. But it, it's just, it, it, sometimes it's hard for me for those things that like are super hyped in my mind to, to, to be fair about it. And, and I know that about myself. So it's like, I don't want to talk about, my review of it or my, my thoughts about it or if I recommend it to you because like I'm so excited because it exists whereas like I kind of need some time to process and then watch it again and for me like a good movie is rewatchability uh, and I know that's not true for everyone but for me it's it's rewatchability so it's like I have to rewatch it to see if it's in my opinion good or not um and then again I'm, I'm just picking since I picked a Marvel movie like um the original Justice League I was like, this is amazing. And I watched it a second time. I'm like, there are some flaws in this movie. Like, but like the first time I didn't see the flaws. I'm just like, oh my God, it's yeah. the Justice League. Like, that's like, it was hard for me to see any, to be critical at all of, a, of that film. I've been just like, or, and same thing is true of Endgame as well, where I'm just like, I, I, for me as an individual, it's hard for me to be um, critical of something like that where I'm just so excited that it exists. It's funny. The it, It's hard to, say anything about Justice League without it being a kind of a weird issue for a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I remember seeing the theater. I saw it with my brother and Reed, which is okay. something. Oh, you didn't um, see it with Sean? No, I don't, I don't Maybe I did. But maybe I, I saw it again. Maybe I went again with with okay. Reed and my brother. I, do, I definitely went with Reed and my brother for sure. Okay. Uh, but it might have been a second time. Um, but when I watched it, I remember thinking – it's not as epic as I expected, but it's more like the cartoon than I expected. It felt like the Justice League cartoon to me. Oh, interesting. Okay. You know, and when okay. it, it's so funny that yeah. like so much of the movie was, you know, some amount of it was was shot by Zach and some by uh, yeah. Joss, but like the Zach one is way more epic. And yes. I feel like I feel like they both have their own qualities to them. Um, despite whatever kind of tor turmoil involved in the production, you know? Yeah. Um, but no matter what, like, it, it's easy to sit there and, like, dismiss something, uh, a piece of art because of the artiste or so or whatever. I think that, like, art itself has to stand on its own. Mm -hmm. um, it, 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 but it, that doesn't that doesn't mean that someone can't say, I can't watch this because of X, Y, and Z. That's anyone's prerogative. Oh, yeah. Th those things so, can be true at the same time. Yep. Yeah some people could watch something look at a painting read a book like whatever and just the experience but then some people who maybe know some of like some horrible thing that happened in the process of that could be like it's not for me it can yeah. still be amazing to some and i don't want to even observe it as another like yeah they, these things can all exist at the same time and yeah a lot of people don't realize that which is weird to me yeah i i do i like when someone says something like i don't know i'm not gonna name so, but oh, I can't listen. That guy was this guy was that kind of a person. I'm like, yeah, that, that sucks, you know. Um, and, and honestly, I, I I can be a hypocrite because I might feel the same way about certain things and not about someone else. So I'm not gonna like. We all have our lines all. for sure. Yeah, you know. And some of those lines are arbitrary, and that's the personal. Arbitrary is wrong. Personal is yeah. is the word. Yeah. No, I, I get that. Yeah. There's there's a band I used to listen to a lot. Uh, they're as I lay dying is her name, Oof. and then the singer. Yeah, after the the book, um, do you no, know but the, I mean the singer. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah, sorry. yeah, right. Okay, so you know, I didn't know if you. I know you, you like like some metal stuff, but I, I not okay. But yeah, like right. So then it's like I don't want to go to his like they're touring again. It's like uh, he's trying to like have his wife killed. Like I'm not. I know he served his time and stuff. But like I'm not trying to 
support that. Like that's way over my line and I'm not going to, you know, get new music of theirs. I'm not going to go to a concert where he's like, I just, that's way over my line. Yep. But there's other ones that I'm sure uh, I'll, I'll still, whether it's music, wherever, where it's not over my line, but it's over other people's lines. And it's like, well, it doesn't make you right or me right or wrong or wrong. It's just, no, we have our different lines. Like the thing is, you know, you can say, well, Michael Jackson, right? That, yeah. But, one of those I was just thinking of. Right. I, I, that's just, I think the low hanging fruit, right? Yeah. Um, but I do think like, if you want to start getting weird, like, Think about Elvis. Oh yeah, there's a weirdness. Or with Jerry Lee, uh, no Jerry, who do Jerry, uh, uh, um, Jerry Great Balls of Fire. Yeah, Jerry yes. Lewis. Uh, yeah, whatever. The Great Balls of Fire. Jerry Lee Lewis. Yeah, Jerry Lee Lewis. I think yeah. one of those. Like, yeah, doesn't matter. Um, yeah, you're right. There's a Jerry it matters. Jerry it matters, but I, I can't remember the guy yeah. who did Great Balls of Fire. Yeah. Um. Or look up like Wagner. You know, Rise of the Valkyries. Look up that guy. Yeah, you gotta find some problematic yeah, yeah. fella, For you know, sure. and you know, dun, 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 dun. like these are things that like we have to like we have to rationalize that like is the art beyond the artiste, you know? Yeah. Um, but I don't. I think it is, but I'm also a hypocrite. I just explained <laughs> like there's certain well, things I won't do, you know? Yeah, and I I wouldn't care. If there's something problematic on any level, and someone told me, "Oh, I can't, I, I can't um, watch that, listen to that," I'm not arguing with them. Like, cool, like, okay, I get it, totally. Yep, that that you it, for you, it's again, it's over at that line, and and you know, I have all personal. I have what all I personal. think is a good moral line with that stuff, but I don't agree with everyone, obviously. So, like, yeah, um, and, and there's also like. Like Michael Jackson again, great example, right? Like if he comes on the radio, he's got great songs, you know, and and you know some stuff wasn't proven. So is it? Did he do it or you know? It, it, so it's a little bit less like. Well, to to be fair, all of it wasn't proven. Right, I remember but, that correctly, right? Like it, like yeah. whereas like convicted meaning. as of like dying, it was crystal clear he was proven guilty because there's so much evidence that he hired someone yeah. to kill his wife. Like so, like that's a factor. But if it comes, like if yeah, if, if um, you know, Man in the Mirror comes on the radio, yeah. me changing the station doesn't affect anything. And I like oh. that song. And he wasn't convicted of anything. Yeah. So it's yeah, the morals right. are interesting. Yeah. Yeah, but but that's what like, like I don't know if I'll when I'll ever sit down and watch uh, Justice League. I don't know. I, I Because I just think that the, the Zack Snyder one is just so much better as it is. Oh, um, at but, this point, I would just rewatch that. Yeah. yeah. But one of them is a lot shorter. <laughs> That's also true. That's also so, true. You know, but also, I think yeah. one of them, like, I don't have any kids, but if I was going to sit down with a kid, you know, like, if I had a kid, like, I'd probably do that one. It's a little easier. That's fair. To, it's a little brighter to look at. It, yeah. So I think that it, everything has its place. Yeah. But... When you're talking about a movie that the first time you watch it, you don't get a clear sense of it. That's the way it was with me with uh, Batman v Superman. I don't, I didn't understand it when I first watched it at okay. all, almost at all. Like it, and the reason why is because I went to go watch a movie that I had in my head. I didn't watch what was filmed, yeah. and I think that it's easy when you're starting to think of. Like my idea of like Batman and Superman are just like they're the you know that they're, they're they're Greek gods in yeah. the pantheon of, of, of pop yeah. culture, and I wasn't I don't think I was ready to see this thing that was like they call it a deconstruction. I'm not really sure I, I see it that way, but I wasn't I I didn't go to see the story that they were presenting. I went to see. Yeah. The story I had in my head, and it was they were they were very far apart. Yeah, and I I went again because I knew I, I felt anyway not new. I felt I was missing something, and um, I liked it a lot more the second time. Okay, and I mean a lot more, a hell of a lot more. Um, I was confused by it the first time. The second time I was I was it made much more sense to me, and I liked it a lot more. Yeah. Um, it wasn't like when I saw Iron Man. I saw Iron Man and I knew I loved it <laughs> like right away. Yeah, that one. <laughs> I mean, yeah. 
The MCU you know? was so lucky that that was. I mean, that movie just hit on all cylinders immediately. Like that, yeah, they really lucked out with. No wonder they treated Robert Downey Jr. very well and John Favreau. I mean, no wonder. Yeah, yeah. The um, I I think I'm the only person who thought the Martha thing was clever. I, I, I like, like I was shocked when people started like crapping all over that. I'm like, Oh, I thought that was kind of yeah. cool that they realized like the humanity of it all was brought back. Cause they, their mother has the same name. I'm like, Oh, that's pretty cool. Like I never thought about like, I, I think part of it too, was that I had been a comic book fan for decades at that point. I never thought about how they both had the same name, you know, like, uh, so I'm like, Oh, Oh, that's cool. Like, and that would bring them back to like, you know, we're just people who have moms. Like, you're not so, only evil, and I'm not, you know, only going to hate you and try to kill you. I don't know. I just, I actually love that. And then I'm like, oh, wait, it seems like everyone in the world thinks this is stupid except me. <laughs> like, it was a really weird, yeah. Yeah. Batman versus Superman was a really weird experience for me. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was a weird one for me because I was like, for, what? I, I, because I, I knew Martha Wayne. I knew Martha Kent. I knew. Yeah. I didn't realize in any way, like, like that seems weird. He has the same name for the moms. Who wrote yeah. this crap? You know, I, I it was that there was that moment I that I realized it in the theater. I was like, ah, wait a minute. I never did. Um, yeah, I never put it together like that they did. So, so to me, I'm like, that was really clever that the writer or writers came up with that. I'm like, that's cool. Like I also think it's common for like if people are talking about the characters, even though everyone knows Jonathan Kent, everyone knows Martha Kent. I think most people could say Ma and Pa Kent I mean, in like Colloquially, you know, for, for the Kents, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah, not for, not for, not for, not for uh, Martha Wayne. Yeah, the Wayne, yeah, <laughs> and yeah Thomas Wayne the names, yeah, Ma sure. and Pa Wayne. Yeah, no, <laughs> it doesn't have that Midwest <laughs> feel. No, no. no. <laughs> yeah, but that I, one. I, I do think that was a weird one. I, I do think, like at the time, it didn't bother me in any way. It was weird that it. At least I don't remember it bothering me, but I do think it, it was a weird thing for people to latch on to. Yeah. To be like, oh, what what crap is this? There's a weird one, I think, because I don't think, and this is not me. Even though I don't love the movie, this is not me like, um, kind of bagging on a movie. But th there was a weird moment toward the end of Civil War, with like, where like, like I think I don't know verbatim, but he says something about like, I, I there was some weirdness with Robert Downey Jr.'s mother and the way oh he, yeah, yeah yeah yeah. And so, like, in, in, in the same way, like, I, I just got to share whatever. I, 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 a lot of that stuff just sort of like flies, like, just goes over. I, I, that stuff doesn't bother me at all in any way. Like, yeah, but I, with, with Civil War, where there, where it was like finally exposed, like, listen, it's not, it's not like he didn't do it or it wasn't his brain. Why, like, He's like, I don't care. It's my mom. Like it was like, but like, yeah. It's like you killed my mommy or something. Yeah, like that. Like, yeah, the, the logical explanation was shown where he wasn't, wasn't you know really, yeah, yeah. right. Sorry. But but I, I also think, yeah, no I also spoilers, think, don't worry. Yeah, I haven't seen it, so I couldn't spoil it. But yeah, and I, I hate Mike and I disagree about spoilers. I hate spoilers. I don't I don't spoil stuff. And Mike Mike thinks it's cool. Just not cool. Mike doesn't. Okay, I don't want to mischaracterize Mike. Mike doesn't think it's cool spoiling for people. He just doesn't think spoiling is a big deal. Or being spoiled is a big deal. I don't care because I feel like if I cared enough, I would have watched it. And if I didn't. And not everyone can watch stuff immediately when it's released. So well, but like sure. even like to be fair, Mike, <laughs> sometimes before the thing even comes out, like there's these articles with headlines. It's like, wait, like I already know who's gonna die in this. And like it hasn't even come out yet, but you put a picture of you'll never guess who died, and it's Jennifer Lawrence. And it's like, wait, does she die in that movie? Like, what the that doesn't like why are you putting that in the headline in the picture of her? And then you watch the movie, it's like she died, like you ruined it anyway. Yeah. It, you know what's funny though, is you, you said they watch the trailers, like oh, Jennifer Lawrence, she's the biggest star in this movie. Weird. And then you see the article, like, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> There's a line you know, between marketing and yeah, like just here's the whole thing. But anyway, it's all. Different. I also think I I also think that there's a big thing with like I don't know, man. Your friends are your friends. Uh, th this stuff where like it is monetized to be a, a shit bag. It's kind of shitty. Wait, when, like for no, we're, 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 these writers are monetized oh, to, oh. to 
to put this this crap out there immediately you know oh yeah because yeah I, it, it, it is, they want the they want those clicks immediately so that yeah i mean the second something's available click my article so i get the ad revenue i'll tell you everything i'll put yeah. enough in the headline that it you know the, the only savings great saving grace sometimes is then they won't it's like hey you know the disney corporation is not happy that you spoiled it so you're not going to get early access to stuff like you do get that for some of the early stuff but once it's released you do still get these people who are just blowing it up what happens and they want the clicks yeah for sure i i think that um i think that the the thing with with spoilers to me is i I just don't take it so personal. Okay. You know, I, I don't, I, I don't, I feel like, like I would never, because I, I know how you feel about sports. I would never do that to you. I would never be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Da, 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 da. And the people watching Mike is yeah. good about that. He knows Sean and I do yeah. not like spoilers. So, so Mike would not spoil it for Sean and I. Yes. But I don't care if yeah. you guys in the chat, spoil yeah. stuff to me and, and i will i will tease you both about how i don't give a shit and how you guys yeah. stop being such wimps about it yeah but it's it's all in good fun i know how you feel yeah so like and i do get it and people like i i am so aware of the fact that people are different than me and the same like like they have like like unless it's something i find repugnant to me it's like totally fine that i have different views with other people about things that aren't important in life like spoilers like the fact that spoilers don't bother you but they both bother me doesn't hurt anyone so like i have no problem with that we differ with this right yeah um but yeah like not liking spoilers for me like when endgame just to use that as an example since i brought up earlier like i lived i went because i went to like the midnight showing because i wanted to see it as soon as possible to avoid spoilers right and um, like even Shanice didn't go me. It was just by myself, sitting next to some random guy. When Mjolnir like moves, and I'm like, oh, okay, so it must be Thor is okay. And then it's cut to Captain America is holding it. I did literally like get out of my seat and I yelled. And there's only two times that a movie's ever done that. It was that one, and then X Men number two colossus was my favorite character at the time oh Colossus, great character i love classes and when he's like i can help and then wolverine goes goes no stay here and i'm like no i want more colossus like how dare you so the, only the opposite the complete opposite of what i wanted to happen is i'm like why did you even put that in the movie like why did you yeah. why did you tease that colossus could go with everyone else and then you're like, you took it from me. Like, so, um, so I'm like, what, you know? So anyway, going back to spoilers though. So if someone had told me, yo, an end game, it's dope. Captain America has got Thor's hammer. It wouldn't have been as awesome. Like, like it wouldn't have felt the same electricity that I had. And like, I wasn't the only person going nuts in the theater. Like that was, I mean, it literally felt like there was an electrical current in the theater of people like, oh my God. Yeah. If someone had taken that from, like, again, this is me. I didn't understand that you or other people could disagree and that's fine. But I was like, man, if someone took that from me, like that would suck in my opinion. But anyway. Yeah. My position on, and I actually have two things because one of them is pretty funny. In my opinion, anyway, <laughs> uh, my position isn't so much that like I think spoilers are fine. I think that if you don't want to be spoiled, you can. It's in your power to not be spoiled, like within reason. I mean, within like, reason. we know we know these movies are coming out. Yeah, like, I, I know. Yeah. I know for sure that we their 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 stuff gets leaked, and so I, I'm not, that's beyond my abilities, and I would never do that. Somewhere. Yeah. Um, but like the idea is that we can. Like if I didn't want to be spoiled on Endgame, I I I would just go see it earlier. You know, I can buy the tickets. It's not complicated. You know, and it's not it's not and it's not you and Sean. It's like when people yeah. like I had someone got mad at me about talking about 
fucking what's that that Bruce Willis movie, the I see dead people movie, whatever that was called. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. A it's couple of yeah. years ago. Yeah, yeah. That's ridiculous. That's stupid. A couple yeah. like what the fuck? Yeah, Go that's fuck true. yourself. That is that is yeah. beyond pop culture, you know? Yeah. Oh yeah, that, yeah, that that that's that's stupid, period, for sure. Right. Yeah, for me it's more of like give it a couple of weeks. Like let people cuz in in you and I are in somewhat unique positions, typically speaking. My kids are older. You don't have kids, so like I want to see the movie this weekend cuz I don't want spoilers. <laughs> But then, like, sometimes it is tough depending on who you – it doesn't have to be kids, but, like, there could be things like, oh, I'm traveling for work that weekend, so I don't get a chance to see the thing I really care about. So, like, to me, like, a couple weeks of people not openly talking about spoilers is, like, seems pretty cool. Um, but anyway, we probably should wrap uh, this up just I, in the near I'll future. I'll wrap up with the story. This is the thing I was saying. That's oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My favorite spoiler of all time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this – this kicked my ass, and I still laugh about it to this day. Um, I don't give a shit because I one, it's a Harry Potter thing. I I, okay. I don't think I I'd ever even seen the movies even to this point. Uh, it was when the sixth book maybe was coming out, and um, but my but my, my friend Sean, a different Sean, showed it to me, and uh, it was a guy in his car with a camera, and it was like eleven fifty eight. Uh, in at night at outside Barnes and Noble, and there's kids wrapped around the building, and he drives around screaming, "Snape killed Dumbledore! Snape killed Dumbledore!" Like over and over again, and all you hear is kids like, "No!" <laughs> I saw that. I did too. It is horrific. <laughs> I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. might be in the top ten funniest things I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> You're a monster. And you, without spoilers, I would not have had that moment. <laughs> you so what a perfect way to end this. The beer was delicious, and you are a monster. <laughs> both both things are 100 percent true. Both things are 100 percent true. <laughs> Too funny. All right. All right. Everyone who watched and, and participated or watching after the fact. You Thank know, you. Awesome. No, this was this was Mike. This was a lot of fun. You and I. Yep. Um, and yeah, people participating. That was it was great. Good. It was like we had some really cool conversation starters, which was nice, and definitely yeah. uh, fostered that. So appreciate that. And uh, yeah, so again, if you're watching on my channel, make sure you check out Mike and Nerd Sense. Um, and then if you're watching on Nerd Sense, Nerd Sense's channel, check out my channel, No Hype Beer Reviews. And um, yeah, Mike, always a pleasure. I'm gonna uh, we'll talk a little bit off camera, but or yeah. off. Uh, line, but uh, yeah, uh, good seeing you as always, and I'm glad we got to do this, brother. Cheers, bud. All right, cheers.